and we're live with a new Han Showdown live stream and we have two beautiful guests. We have Alex and we have Dennis. Um, Hello. Hello. Today we're going to talk about gunplay experience. Uh, so this whole theme will be just one episode and every week we'll have a different theme that we'll talk about. Um, the structure is going to be as followed. Uh, first they're going to tell about, about Hunt as well as about the guns in general with some images. Then we take a look at the editor, and then we're going to play some more Hunt, and at the end we'll do another Q&A. So if you have questions in the chat, uh, Rick or other, other community manager will answer them for you guys, or if he can, and everything we'll write down and we'll ask at the end. Uh, and we'll also go through some questions that we get at the end when we have the chat up. So let's start with some introductions. Who, who are you guys exactly? Well, let me start. Um, I'm Alex. Um, I'm a senior 3D artist at Crytek. I uh, started at Crytek in 2015 for the specifics of Hunt, and I took over the weapons, and I'm, I'm responsible for um, yeah, modeling and uh, texturing the weapons in Hunt mainly. So I'm the one who makes the beauty stuff that, that, that goes bang bang. <laughs> Do you have a passion for weapons? Like, is that something that has come from the past? Um, Actually, not so much. So actually, I have never shot a real rifle. So that's a fun fact to know. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I enjoy um, um, doing, yeah, modeling mechanical um, stuff like like cars, for example, or um, mechs, tanks, stuff like that. And that transitions nicely into modeling weapons. Okay, cool. And you, Dennis? So I'm Dennis. Uh, I'm the lead game designer at uh, Hunt Showdown. And um, I've been basically in, at Crytek for like 11 years now, working on all the crisis games. And uh, yeah, my job is making sure that this game is fun in the end. Okay. Well, what is Hunt about? So yeah, this may be a good point to start with before we go into the details of the weapons. What is Hunt? I mean, just as a recap, because many of you might not have heard about that. Hunt is um, a first-person online multiplayer game. So you're basically a bounty hunter. Uh, you're going out in the swamps of Louisiana to hunt monsters for gold. However, doing so means there's other hunters as bounty hunters who are trying to take the prize from you. So basically, as a hunter, you are up against others of the similar brand who are trying to take the stuff from you. And what kind of hunter are you? The one that goes after the place or after just the bounty and out? Ah, so I personally am the hunter who tries to accomplish the mission, but we have lots of hunters out there who just basically try to get my head. <laughs> um, so the gunplay itself, I mean, that's, that's very interesting because I mentioned it, like, hunt is basically in the swamps of Louisiana. Um, hunt is set in a specific era. It's a late 19th century, and as such, it's a bit of a unique space for a shooter. Because like we are one foot basically in the Western era. It means like bolt actions, uh, repeater rifles, uh, revolvers. And we are already a little bit more into the more modern age, like the pre-World War I type of technology. Like, so the first automatic weapons start to appear. And our hunters are basically taking advantage of both of that. So in Hunt, what you can see is basically um, a nice marriage between the two different universes, like the Western era and the modern age and seeing hunters employ like all sorts of stock weapons from that era, but also building their own weapons. So being like in these two eras just gives us a rich variety for gunplay. Like we can choose from so many different sources. So it's actually pretty fun. And what is your favorite? Do you both have a favorite weapon from the top of your head? Um, well, right now, well, it, it changes every week actually for me. It's usually the gun that I'm that I'm that I've, that I've worked on last. So right now it's the Vettelie rival, which we'll see later. Um, yeah. And for you, Dennis? Uh, for me, it's a double barrel shotgun. I just love shotguns. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm always, I like the <laughs> idea of shotguns, but I'm never this effective with them because, like, the short range, it's like. So, I what's your favorite weapon then? The knife. <laughs> I have to say, I really, it just, I don't know, it always feels so rewarding when I can knife someone. It's because you have to get close, it's like double risky. Um, but maybe because, like, sometimes potato aim. I don't know. I had one, I think it was the. Win, Winfield or mm -hmm. Win, yeah, yeah, that yeah. one was pretty nice. I was not a much, uh, not a big fan of the, the one with the one ammo that only oh, has one the, round. Oh, uh, the like, Romero. So hard for me because when I shoot, I miss, and then it's like I have to reload. So yeah, definitely, that shot yeah. has to hit. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But there, there is definitely a lot of different weapons. Um, one shot, one kill. Yeah. That's actually a very <laughs> good wish. point because, um, so as part of the, the the technology level of that era, like this late nineteenth century. Um, you have limitations. You, you don't have your AR-15 with like 30 rounds and just automatically spraying everything, right? This is not the type of game we're making. Yeah. We, we are a bit different than that. Like, so we have weapons with like a six-shooter revolver, right? Like you have six shots. 
Well, better, really better make them count, right? The chain gun is also super cool. Yes. So this this is the cool thing. Is that, uh, so our hunters, they're obviously bound by the error, but they also, they kind of use these weapons and modify them. So they turn them into better tools for the hunt, which means like putting blades on them. So you can kind of like do melee attacks with them. Or um, as you just nice. mentioned, like the, we have a revolver where you just take off the drum and you put the chain in. So all of a sudden you have a revolver more than six shots. So it's it's stuff like that, which is really, really cool because like you can kind of customize and modify it. And when it comes to like explosives, for example, like we have very, very custom unique stuff because when we are in the era before the hand grenade, um, mm -hmm. so obviously we still want to have nice things going, like going up, exploding. So we kind of need to make them ourselves. So this is where the hunters kind of craft their own little weapons have like uh, razor wire bombs that kind of explode into like a cloud of razor wire, shred everything. We have dynamite, we have makeshift frag bombs, which is basically just a dynamite stick with like some some um, shrapnel stuff around it. Mm -hmm. This is where we can really go crazy and it's like we had a lot of fun basically coming up with many of those weapons there. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's take a look at some of those weapons. We have some on the screen right here. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, this is a selection of the weapons that you can will be able to play in hand. So um, some of them we have we have shown we have shown before. Others of those uh, you can see are they are they are new. And um, yeah, what I find really intriguing um, of our uh, weapon cast that we will feature is yeah just the variety. So I think there will be um, something for for everyone. Like everyone has a certain type of um, I don't know like type of how to approach a game, or how to approach um, a mission. So uh, as you said, you like the knife and um, the, the wind field. Um, I'm more for the really high damage um, 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 guns, like the Mosin Nagan, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think we, rifle, we yeah. have a really nice mixture of everything there. Yeah. yeah, can we get the screen for the OBS so we can see you as well? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You want to comment maybe on some of those weapons on the left, like where you can see there? Yeah, the modified on the back, the blade. And we also have like really nasty me me melee weapons, like the machete, for example. I haven't tried the machete yet. I want it so bad. Like, I saw that it was a machete in there. It's like, I need to try this machete. It looks <laughs> super mm. cool. Yeah, I think, is it like, uh, how, how, would, how would you compare the machete to the knife, for example? Um, the reach is yeah. far, f far superior. So basically, if there are two grunts, you have a chance of maybe hitting, maybe hitting both with them. Yes. Um, you can block with it, so yeah. reduce the incoming damage, oh, for example. Oh, cool. So that's quite handy. And also, it's easier accessible. So the knife is um, a tool. Yes. So it might take more time to equip it, while the machete is your secondary weapon. So, for example, if you run out of ammo, you just press Q, switch to the machete, and you're good to go if your magazine is empty, for example. So would a machete be a good weapon to take to a boss fight, or would that be too weak? It, it might be okay. However, um, ideally, you bring something much bigger. Like, I mean, we're talking about, like, mm -hmm. shotguns. We're talking about yeah. dynamite sticks. So um, it comes down to how much time you want to spend with that boss. Because that's super sure. important. Because we're, we are not, for most, like, a, a boss fighting game. The bosses are just, like, an obstacle in your way. Mm -hmm. What you actually want is a trophy from the boss. And the longer you have to fight the boss, the longer you have to be around him, the faster other players might be able to catch up with you. Yeah. So you want to be efficient about how you go about, like, destroying that boss. So ideally, if you bring bigger weapons, uh, like some end gear, end game gear, like some like we've seen it in some of the previous previous streams, like the uh, the, the aftermath, which is like a converted bolt action yeah. uh, that fires automatically. Obviously, you can get around the boss very quickly, but you make a lot of noise and use a lot of like a lot of ammunition. That means. What comes after the boss fight, obviously, you, you might be at a disadvantage because you've burned through all the stuff. Yeah. And there comes yeah. the, the, um, the good melee weapon into place because like, you're saving up the ammo for the boss, for example, yes. because yeah. you can efficiently play the, all the, uh, kill all the minor threats in the, in, the, in the area. Although I always feel when it comes down to the showdown where you have the other players, I think having a gun then is more helpful than a machete. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and, unless you're a really good sneaker, which I think if, you, if you're a knife player, you probably manage. I, I have to say, I have some knife kills and I was very proud of them. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's, and at least, yeah, what you say, you don't have to worry about ammo. And, like, yes. we have places on the map where you can get ammo, but sometimes you can't get to them. So you're, like, having something on that. So would you say, because obviously it goes in a different slot, would you always take a knife and a machete or just leave that slot for something else? 
So the knife has an advantage in terms of it is very fast. So the attack rate is very quick. You can do like yeah. lots of quick steps uh, and uh, it's a very precise uh, killing tool. So you just like doing a heavy melee attack. So it's for understanding. You can just do regular melee attacks or you can just like hold the button down longer and you do a powered attack basically. Yeah, um, yeah, you might have so. seen something similar in the crisis games already. It's basically giving you a chance to kind of like put more effort into the same attack. And mm -hmm. obviously, it has an, has an impact on like the stamina being consumed for the uh, for the melee attack, etc. But the knife is going to be the precision tool. The machete is more how you where you basically kind of like cut through like swaths of enemies. Like this is this is how you really go throughout most of the mission. The knife is more that a tool of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And how many modded guns do we have currently? So at the moment, um, we will go into our first uh, uh, release with I think it's like nine rifles, twelve pistols, uh, eight shotguns, three melee weapons. I think it's like nine consumable seven tools around that. So it's it's quite a bit. So what's important for us is that the players, as they basically start the game, they have a chance to kind of like play the way they want to play, right? Like there's different yeah. different different archetypes. Like different players play differently. There's long range guy, it's the melee guy, uh, the guy who loves shotguns, love the guy who loves rifles. Yeah. We would like to have all of these areas covered. So at least with a couple of basic weapons, and that's that's quite a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, when I say, like, for example, eight shotguns, that means there will be um, a limited set of true different shotguns. So we have one barrel, we have a double barrel, we have a pump action, and then there are variations of those. So you mm -hmm. might see, like, a shotgun with a blade on it, for example, or you might have a sawn off version, which obviously, if it's the barrel is cut off, like, it has a different choke, therefore, like, the, the it's more of a room sweeper rather than, like, a more precise shotgun. So depending on which of those weapons you use, it kind of gives you different opportunities how to play the game. So yeah. that's very important. Okay. What about the grenade? I see the grenade and the bomb. What yeah, so that's it? kind of the uh, variation that we have. So the the grenade is um, um, we have well we plan a bunch have to have a bunch of different grenades. So for now, this is the only like kind of typical grenade that you know. So mm -hmm. you pull the pin, throw it, land somewhere, explodes. Um, later, there will be m much cooler stuff uh, to be added, um, like like grenades that stick to surfaces, but that's something um, that will be um, only later in the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah. but there is, we have like with those items, we have a lot of creative freedom mm -hmm. and um, they offer so much possibility um, to employ on the battlefield. Like just, just to, to, uh, to, to add variation about like the, the, the timer, the fuse, for example, on those, on those items um, can, just, can just change the way how you use them. Yeah, and the dynamite is just like raw power so um yeah i see that <laughs> yeah, we'll see more of that later <laughs> yeah what what is your go-to like uh consumables that you guys both take what is your preferences i always try to have at least one dynamite stick on me you never know there might be that one door that might be that one enemy dynamite or it's just like it's it's, it's <laughs> i just have to see me uh, exactly <laughs> so um, if you blow up you know what's caused it <laughs> dynamite dynamite is the way to go for me uh i love that uh it's just like uh, it's such a tactical tool, right? So you you, mm -hmm. you can obviously do a lot of damage against like a boss if need be. You can you can use that to uh, kind of open up new paths, like if there's like a locked door somewhere rather than like trying to smash it in with a rifle butt yeah. for like a half like half a minute or so. You can actually just blow it up, um, and obviously it it's also a great distraction tool because uh, our AI in the game is all about uh, sound perception, which means mm -hmm. if you use anything which makes a lot of noise like an explosive. Obviously, AI is kind of drawn to that, so you can use it to stir things up intentionally. So if you know players are in a combo up ahead, throwing just a dynamite in there might be enough to activate all of the AI around that and make it very hard for the guys to come out alive. Okay, and the concertina. Oh, I, I think, was it with you that we played and you drew the concertina and almost killed me? Uh, it could be, I don't know. Where we were like, I threw a lot of concertinas. We should put it inside <laughs> and then it was outside and it was like, ah, I'm bleeding. Uh, the concertina is a really cool weapon as well. I mentioned it before. Yeah. It's basically a coil of compressed razor wire, and uh, it's under tension. And uh, as you throw it, when it impacts, the kind of the tension releases, and that, that whole pressurized concertina wire is just going everywhere, yeah. and uh, in, in, all entangling, about killing. Yeah, Magnus is an expert with concertina wire now. I've heard. Um, and uh, basically, not only does it kill and and uh, hurt whoever enters, mm -hmm. it also is a blocker. Yeah. Right. As you, you, it takes time to get rid of it. You can use melee attacks uh, to kind of like cut through, or you just like blow it up. Um, but and obviously, again, the dynamite helps. Dyna <laughs> dynamite helps. So that's what I said. Like dynamite is a good thing to have. Uh, but even dynamite, you have like different grades. Like so, there's like the single dynamite stick, and then there is like different bundles. So like you kind of like 
basically uh, tie them up and actually have like a bundle of three, four, five sticks together. And obviously that's going to make a bit, much bigger explosion. And there's always some risk with that as well, obviously, in terms of uh, like if you try to duck behind an explosive barrel, right, you might just blow up yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Never happens. Never happens, ever. Self-awareness. <laughs> Awareness of your environment. That's key. Um, and mates, let's talk a little bit maybe about the um, the gunplay in general. So yeah. like, so... I mean, as you've seen already, like from some of the previous streams and what you see today, is like, so Hunt plays like a shooter. It is a shooter at heart, but also we do things a little bit differently here and there. That comes down from from the setting on one end. So we talked about like some some of the weapons, just like uh, like just provoking a different type of gameplay, like taking care of ammunition, being aware of when you would actually want to reload your weapon. So like always being on top of of, of your ammo counter is is very important. Like we celebrate the dry fire. Like the click is the best sound we have in the game, uh, especially when like the monster standing in front of you and you have forgotten to reload your weapon before. So we intentionally have that in because it's it's it just helps from an atmospheric point of view. People need to be on top of that. They need to need to kind of like be a bit more self reliant on it's managing. Player skill thing it's, it's a player skill. You know, need to know your tools. Exactly, and that that also goes down to how you handle the, the weapons. So like the weapons of the era, they're they're new, they're fresh, but they also have quirks. Yeah. Like so, we have a pump action shotgun in the game, and that is a different pump action shotgun than what you would normally today call a pump action shotgun. Mm. The mechanism was very new; it was freshly invented, and it had flaws in it. And we've replicated it in the game, so that means reloading that pump action shotgun is a bit awkward. But this is something which intentionally designed into it, and you need to learn how to operate that weapon to take the best out of it. Uh, it's the same way for for um, uh, like a, a repeater rifle. Like we have our Winfield repeater rifles. You see one there with the blades on the bottom yes. left on on the on the big weapon collage. If you maybe want to pull that in, Rick. Yeah, they um, see it. They see it. Or oh, the next one. Exactly. Okay, yeah. Um, so you you basically have, or this case is it's actually a shotgun, but um, we have like repeater rifles. It's like a rifle uh, where you kind of need to uh, like uh, charge the the lever every time you fire them, and they will load up around into a chamber. That's what, that's a concept of chambering around that we actually worked mm -hmm. into our weapons, uh, which I think is very cool. But it means you also need to manage that. So, for example, if you completely empty that weapon, you don't have a bullet even in the chamber anymore. That means after you, you run dry and you want to reload, after you put the first round in, or whenever you stop reloading, you need to do that action before you can actually fire, because that round needs to be loaded from right. the magazine into the yeah. chamber. That puts like half a second, a second delay, obviously, in, which means if you don't plan that out carefully, you might be already on top of enemies. Um, now, if you if you make sure that you always have that one round in the chamber, topping up the weapon, just putting a couple of rounds in here and there, super easy, super straightforward. But this is where we require the player to be skilled, like to learn these weapons and and get like a relationship with the weapons in terms of what are the quirks, what are the pros and cons, how do I operate this the most efficiently. Mm -hmm. That's very important in this game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there there will, will be the fact that, for example, certain guns just play so differently, so you will have your favorite weapon. Yes. Everyone will yeah. have it. Yeah. And with the added variation and the uh, like different butt, different butt stocks, um, maybe even variable magazine sizes, on shotguns, for example, yes, um, there comes like the variety that you have your gun that functions in a specific way, but you have um, the option to I just say, okay, I want this rival, but maybe with a blade on 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 the on the on the, on the back. Stuff. Exactly. So like, this is this is where also like our pipeline is pretty cool. It's something maybe Alex can talk about a little bit in a second. Uh, it's like the way we build our weapons, so the way the way we kind of author them and and uh, allow us to be very effective when it comes to making variations easily. Um, just before we go into the into that part, um, one thing we want to do moving forward with Hunt is introduce a proper crafting system. So this won't be initially in our uh, yeah. first early access release, but as we go through our experience, we introduce it at one point. And that system will allow you to basically be a bit more in control of how you, these weapons get modified, like for a blueprint system and ingredients. Um, at first, however, basically we will provide to the players these variations as presets, mm -hmm. um, but the system is so modular that we can easily transition between these two as we are live, basically. That would be interesting to see what kind of weapons people come up with. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, there's lots of blades to choose from. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, that seems really cool. I cool. can't wait to make like this ultimate like melee combined with shooting like powerful. I, oh, good. <laughs> 
Um, and maybe, uh, actually, we're, we're going to switch things around a little bit from the order. Maybe uh, what makes sense is if you talk a little bit about the pipeline right now, yep. and then talk a little bit about more about in-depth in gunplay as we then also transition over to the editorial side of things as yeah. the next part. Do we want to have the fourth image then? Uh, no, no, it's, it's okay. okay. So, like, on this image, um, we can see, like, on the different parts um, our gun, uh, that our gun consists of. So, like, when we started with Hunt, we knew, okay, we need a lot of variety, and we want to be able to um, create this variety without too much effort. So we decided, okay, we split our guns into different parts, like parts that are there in real life. So, for example, in this um, uh, example, we can see that the gun is uh, consists of um, four parts, which is the receiver, the buttstock, um, the barrel, and the handguard. And um, while the original shotgun, this is, by the way, the, the Romero 77, um, uh, the original gun is the, the piece in the center. We can now, for example, um, create a smaller, um, a shorter barrel, which of course will increase the spread of the shotgun. But then again, we have variety for you to pick from. And um, we, can e we can quickly produce this variety because we don't have to create a completely new weapon, but only a shorter barrel, which takes much less time for us. Same with the, with the, uh, with the stock, for example. Um, creating just a new stock with the blade, for example, opens m many more gameplay possibilities um, with minor um, additional work for us. So I think that's a quite handy um, system. And uh, uh, you, can, you can see like, um, what we can make out of this, uh, the same weapon that uses, not, um, that, that uses the same gunplay mechanics. For example, at the bottom, we can see the um, um, the hatchet version of the Romero 77. So there is a um, makeshift um, wood axe blade attached to it, which is really handy in killing grunts, and a custom-made stock for better for for being able to wield it better. How do you come up with a weapon like that? Um, well, that one our nice concept art department is always happy to. Um, give us um, the creative injection for such things. And um, that weapon in particular, uh, we had some references from medieval times. Mm. So um, weapons um, with um, yeah, attached blades to the front um, were a nice thing in medieval times where you only had one shot and then it was uh, it, it came to reloading for I don't know fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, having that blade handy um, that was a a, a big thing back then, and we, and we thought, okay, um, why not combining this? And uh, yeah, so uh, the, the invention of shells has really helped us. Like, that would be very, very bad if you would have to do like a proper gunpowder and reloading <laughs> takes like 10 yeah. minutes. So, cartridges and that is really, really important for us because you want to reload a weapon a bit faster if like five zombies are coming to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> or if you're shooting a spider that runs around past you, you have ne next try 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, and um, in the next image, um, you can actually see an, a few more variants. Like that's just a more pretty screenshot. Um, um, how 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 good our weapons in hunt will look right now and will look uh, moving forward. So here we have um, uh, another variant that wasn't shown in the screen before. There's the hand cannon, the Romero hand hand cannon version, which is like a short pistol pistol stock. It's really handy. It's 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 quick to wield. And um, yeah, but the spread is really increased. So there's, it's not a good idea to attack some uh, something at mid range with no. this. Yeah. We like have a, a model a of that bottom one here, right? Like something similar at least. Um, we, we show some of that stuff later in the editor, actually. Yes, yeah. like okay. you will see that actually live when we try to shoot barrels. And so everything and you see here is already in game. Yeah, in no, no. I mean, but we have like a real life version. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. have we have a few of those concepts that we are showing. We already have like replicas in the office. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, that's, that's that's super helpful, especially for the True. animators because they can actually like have like that weapon metal wood pieces in their hand, like they get mm -hmm. a feeling for like how how much they actually weight them. Like it it helps just like the animation process it's so heavy. much. Yep. It's really yep. heavy. No, I had it in my hands. and was like, oh, <laughs> it's small, but it looks so it looks so light, but it's so heavy. There w wasn't even any ammunition in there. So, like, imagine like having the wielding the. the uh, it's good that I'm not taking those. A repeat those arrival, and then life. you have like 16 shots in there. Yep. So that <laughs> that adds up. Wow. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And um, another part of our uh, pipeline and our, in our development process for weapons is also that we are quick in developing weapons. So on our next screenshot, um, there we can see 
um, the different stages that a gun um, basically goes through when we develop it. So uh, the, upper sh the, the upper gun is, is something we call a prototype or a white box state in our yeah. game. So um, that's usually the first model that we add to the game. So that's something that we can produce quit pretty quickly. So it's, a, it's already a quite detailed model, but we don't pay so much attention about that every screw is super accurate and that, the, that it shades correctly and that it has textures. All this doesn't matter at all. It just basically we want the, the, the bigger shapes. Um, we, want, we want to see um, uh, accurate representation of the overall um, sizes. Um, the internal mechanics that we have are also represented because with this model, for example, the animators will continue to work. So they will create the first person and third person animations. And the whole point of it is that we can put out those quickly, that the game designers can start playing with it, can make adjustments. Maybe a gun is too powerful for um, a mid game weapon. Mm. Um, so we have to kind of realign it in the weapon cast, maybe. And yeah, the animators have to uh, create basic animations so we so we know okay it fits it's big enough um, it reads the iron side works for example these are mm -hmm. really important things and on this model we can also iterate quite quickly so for example if if the iron side just doesn't work we can do adjustments on it so um, the gunplay experience is of course um, our one of our biggest concerns because um, as with the shooter gameplay. Um, and there's there's oftentimes we have to make adjustments here and there, and, and that's done quickly. I think that's super helpful. So we, we designers we're usually very demanding. We want these weapons like right now, right? We don't want to start playing with them, setting them up. So it's always great to have just like some some quick start models, basic models in there. And there's also the point that uh, so unlike for example the crisis games, we're we're basing our work off like weapons of the time. Like so they are pretty realistic weapons. Mm -hmm. We make we make them our own basically. We modify and we add things, especially like when it comes to the customization. But for the most part, they're historic weapons. And obviously, taking a historic weapon and just putting it into a first-person perspective, right? That might not always work out of the box. Yeah. Like, like the, the, the weapon might have like some physical attributes where there might be a bolt action, and a certain parts of the weapon look nicer on a certain angle. So it's just important to very early in the process be able to just move that around, getting feeling for the weapon. So first off, we can play with it, obviously, but also then uh, the other other disciplines, like uh, from an art side, from an animation side, audio side, can kind of own the weapon as well, make it their own, and and. Yeah, polish them. Yeah. Okay. And also we have a chance if, for example, something doesn't work out, for example, if a weapon is too powerful or, or, or proves to not be as fun, we can also like drop it. And we don't, we, di we didn't lose so much time. Um, so that's, that gives us some freedom. So we don't have to stick with something we don't feel um, is good for the game, for example. Yeah, and the the lower the lower image on the, on the um, that we see, that is actually the final quality. So um, on first glance, the difference is, yeah, there are textures on the model, but um, on up and closer inspection, there's a lot more going on there. So um, in order to get from the upper gun to the lower gun, we have to do a high poly modeling. So that takes quite some time. We have to do proper low poly modeling, texturing, baking. So there are quite a few steps involved in this. That takes time. And um, yeah, in um, the end, the result is worth it, definitely. But um, we have to um, make sure that we don't that, that all the all the issues all the all the problems that such a gun might have and and, and that we have basically covered them with how the white box model how long does that process take on average like is it a time very variations of time per gun or is it around the same time that you finish this thing um well the first the first image so, so usually we spend um a day for example, on just researching. So basically, that's really a day where you just browse the web. They, can, they can be so painful, yeah, like trying really to find some painful. reference of some of the weapons, yes. like it was more than a day. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, we go to gun auctions, um, not we go there, but basically visit gun auction websites, for example, there you can find yeah. really nice references of, of, of guns that really are from that era. Because there's also the problem that sometimes you have replicas and um, um, or guns that are just that are made in in, in the in the current time, but, and yeah, we wanna we wanna uh, have the real thing as reference, yeah. and then we start with the white box model, and that usually can take yeah also one or two days to to do, because our like these prototype uh, models are c actually quite ac quite accurate already, um, but then um, most of the um, um, many problems are already um, covered.
like um, is intersections with the mechanics. Mm -hmm. This is all covered yes. then. Um, so there's really a low risk to run into major issues. There are always issues coming up, but uh, th that's something we solve then. And yeah, doing then the final gun, that can take um, from a week to maybe even three weeks, maybe even uh, five weeks, depending on complexity. So uh, a handgun, of course, um, takes far less time than maybe um, something um, in, we have guns uh, prepared that are um, completely fictional, that are kind of like legendary improvised guns from mm -hmm. the hunters. And these are really crazy. And um, those types of guns, um, they require special programming because they really work. Mm -hmm. they, they have special firing modes, maybe. Yeah. They, re they really work um, out of the box. So it's not the next rifle that is just bullets in and, and you shoot. But... Um, yeah, something like the concertina, for example. The concertina mm. is also an item that is really out of the box. And um, for those kind of items, um, they take much more time. But the regular rifles, it's like uh, uh, three to two weeks, more okay. or less. That, that's, I mean, it, I always imagined that it would take much longer from a non like design perspective because like obviously I have no idea how long it takes to finish a weapon and like sometimes you're waiting for a weapon in a game and it takes forever to add that. It's, it's, it's an iterative process, right? I mean, yeah. so, uh, so sometimes uh, you, you have like everything in place and you can just basically just, uh, just work through it and, and get something in the game very quickly. But I mean, it also depends on, um, on top of like the stuff Alex was saying like the complexity of the weapon when it comes to modifications. Like, so do we need to have different blade variations? Yes. Do we want to provide different attachments um, uh, we can put on a weapon? And they will be set up as unique weapons, but they all share obviously the same framework. So, but they still need to be kind of like envisioned and, and, and made at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, and also like, as I said, sometimes it takes three weeks. And to basically cut corners on this, because of course we have a huge weapon cast, even mm -hmm. like from the start, and that weapon cast will increase. So um, we had one point in the production up uh, to now where we really had to pump out a lot of weapons and we needed them to be textured and basically on a, represent, uh, on a representative level so that everyone knew, okay, this gun will look that way. Because the upper one, there's no textures. There are yeah. materials there that kind of look like it, but um, it is not in, it, it doesn't have the grittiness. It doesn't, it, it would feel like a, like a, a like some, it wouldn't be long into the world of hunt if it would, if you would just put it into the environments with all the mud and the grime and the dirt, and therefore we basically sometimes have introduced a representative state for models mm -hmm. where we basically just put textures on the upper uh, weapons um, quickly, so we can basically have have a textured version um, within a few more days, and uh, then we also um, yeah, it, and and yeah for certain weapons. Um, we um, we're, ju we're just sticking to that, and afterwards, when we have wh when we have uh, time to to do so, we will um, bring all uh, those as well to final quality. I mean, what it gives us is basically one thing, and that's super super important: is variety. Like we want players to be able to experience like a huge rich arsenal, so they can find the weapon they like most, and that means cutting corners sometimes. Yes. Just like getting some of the weapons maybe not on the final 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 level of quality. But obviously, they will still be on a very high level of quality. And uh, mm -hmm. you've you've probably already seen in previous streams, and we'll see today, certain weapons you thought were final, which were actually representative, and yes. the other way around. So uh, to to the player, as he's playing the game, the difference isn't really that apparent. It's more about like how optimized the weapons are, and obviously how, how well the pipeline has been followed, mm -hmm. making them efficient. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings us over a little bit more again to the gameplay side. So. Um, uh, Rick, if you could load up the image we had before where we had the sawn off version of the shotgun next to the other ones, this one here. Um, so what you can see with this is, for example, there's three versions of the same weapon, right? So obviously you have the basic version, then you have one where this, the blade's added, and then you have the, the sawn off version. So why would you bring a sawn off version and if you could just have the normal one? And that comes down to how we manage with the inventory. Mm -hmm. So um, every player can carry a, a primary and a secondary weapon. The primary weapon by default is going to be either a pistol or a rifle, like a long weapon, two-handed yeah. weapon. Um, and then the secondary weapon you can pick up is usually a backup. Like, so this is more of a sidearm. Now, the interesting thing is uh, that a sawn-off shotgun, that counts as a backup. So I can bring my, my uh, Winfield repeater rifle or my bolt action Mosina gun as my main weapon, but still have that little handy one-shot sawn-off shotgun in my pocket as a secondary backup when I need it. 
And um, by using skills, like traits the player can learn, this is where you kind of upgrade your, your, your hunters as you go on the mission mm -hmm. and succeed and survive, hopefully. Uh, they become better at their job and they learn new things. So that they learn, for example, to carry two main weapons or they learn combining weapons in a different way. Moving forward, the dual wielding, you've seen it already in some of the previous videos. So that's yeah. a skill you need to learn. The hunter has to possess that skill and then they can equip, equip themselves with weapons like that. So that's very important. But uh, in general, um, the players are encouraged to kind of like also as a team, as you will see that when, when later on we actually have a session and hopefully survive a little bit, um, that we kind of try to match up our equipment. Like so one of us might specialize more towards close range or the other one might bring a bit more of a tactical gear or go more long range. And so that's really just between the players of a team to kind of mm -hmm. find the nice mix of equipment that helps them to like overcome most of the obstacles. Like. If you're in an open field and you just brought shotguns and you're being fired at from the edge of the field, it's probably going to be a bit of a trouble there. Yeah. Um, another point that's important from our side is that um, besides these two main weapons, is uh, you have a variety of tools and consumables you can bring into the mission. So again, that depends on the amount of inventory slots you have and you kind of upgrade them again with these skill points or traits I mentioned before. What it means is that uh, you need to choose a little bit whether you want to bring a flashlight, whether you want to bring a knife, whether you want to bring... Uh, like little distraction devices uh, or fuses, which like basically a railroad flare, uh, kind of like illuminates an area for like 10 minutes. Um, or if you want to bring maybe a bit more offensive gear, like that's the consumable side, which is uh, basically explosives. Um, when I say consumables, that basically just means that if you've used them in a mission and in, in the, in the uh, basically after mission shop, you would buy a new, a fresh one with your yeah. in-game currency there, whatever you've earned from a mission. So it's just part of a regular economy. Uh, it's just important because what it means is that you, uh, you're you not supposed to just spam grenades all the time. You should really be considering when to use these explosives mm. because they, don't, they just come for free. You have to come and invest something in them. That's different to, for example, the weapons and the tools, which always restock at the mission start. So if I find all my bullets, I don't need to like manually buy bullets in a shop. But what I need to do is I need to restock on those rare but very powerful consumables. And I think we'll see a couple of those in a bit. You guys think you're ready to dive into the editor? Yes, let's okay. do that. So we're going to take a short break and uh, we're just going to set up everything up and then we're going to go into the editor and afterwards we're going to play the game. So Yay. we'll see you guys in a little bit. Stay tuned and goodbye.
right. I guess we should be back now. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Can you see us? Hello. Hello. All right. So we're basically sitting in front of one of the machines now. And uh, we want to show you a little bit uh, what we've just talked about in practice. So we have our little nice uh, test environment here. It's like a little test level we have, very empty, just a couple of props in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to load up a couple of weapons and just show you in practice what it means to actually operate them, like how you can be efficient about it, what's special about the controls in, in Hunt per se, and uh, yeah, just basically show you that a little bit outside of the normal stressy actual uh, mission structure where you want to run for the bounty. So this gives us a little bit of a nice framing here. So I'm going to just jump into the editor here. Um, I'm going to start with this one of the most basic weapons we have, which is the Nagand revolver. So this is like a pretty modern weapon of that era. Um, so I think introduced like around 1895. And uh, it's basically a single action revolver. What that means is every time you pull the trigger, you need to manually charge the hammer again afterwards and you can fire again. And uh, it has seven rounds in it, in, in the drum. It's a pretty weak weapon, uh, but it's a good foundation basically to then customize it later on. It's also one of the only revolvers, uh, at least of that time, where you were able to actually put a silencer on, which is interesting because we do have a version with a silencer. <laughs> um, so basically, as you, as you fire the weapon, uh, you will notice one thing. By default, in Hunt, and you've seen that probably in some of the previous streams, you will not aim, which means is we do not have hip fire in the game. You need to actually aim by holding the by default right mouse button down to get into this first stage of aiming. This is a very important point for Hunt because it, it is a barrier we've intentionally designed into the game because every shot counts and it's very, very important for you to be very concise about when you want to make noise and when not. So just running in, guns blazing, usually gets you killed very quickly in that game. Um, so just aiming and then you press the fire button afterwards, it just fires a couple of shots off as normal. So this will become flesh and blood very, very quickly. Um, what it means, however, is that by default you don't have iron sights. So you might wonder, where are the iron sights? So what we've done is basically we've put that on uh, by default shift uh, button and then basically you can just toggle between the two stages. So we're treating iron sights not as our default. We want the player to be in our regular shoulder aim 80% of the time and it will be fine. The weapons are very precise, you can land enough headshots uh, easily with that. And then if you want to basically snipe, if you want to really be precise, you go to this mode by targeting the button, just as you would hold breath with a, like a sniper rifle in other games, and uh, go into uh, that uh, proper inside state. Obviously, if there's scope on top now, you would be looking for the scope, and uh, do your precision shot. So we kind of give you a little bit more zoom on iron sights than other games might, because we really treat it a bit as a sniper mode, which is something you will see as we play later on. Uh, in a game where there are not uh, like any uh, ACOG scopes, there are no like uh, super high powered thermal scopes, we're not in the modern era, like iron sights is more of a common thing. And obviously we want to make sure that this is not frustrating for players. So we want to make sure that if you want to still snipe someone, like try to put like a headshot on a grunt, uh, like 20, 30 meters away, you should be able to do so. Um, now, when it comes to the reloading mechanisms of this weapon, it's pretty interesting because, like, uh, so a revolver, you might guess, is a pretty straightforward weapon to operate. However, when it's completely empty, it doesn't really matter where you start reloading. So I press, press the reload button, and it just opens up the side and then exchanges one round after the other. Um, very straightforward. Now, I can cancel at any moment, um, so if, like, enemy comes around the corner, I can just use those four rounds I reloaded rather than waiting to reload all of them, as you've seen in other games. Um, now, when I reload now again, because obviously the, the drum only spins in one direction, um, I would need to magically put it at the correct position. See, it takes a little bit longer to go into the reload process because of that. It's a very minor, subtle point, but this is like the type of mechanics you have to look for in Hunt, because the weapons kind of like can be optimized by knowing these, these uh, basically procedures, how you operate the weapon. You can kind of like be more efficient, reload faster. Maybe it might be uh, more interesting just fire that last round off and then have a quick reload rather than having to go through a longer reload. Now we can show you that a little bit better in one of the other weapons we want to show you, which is uh, our Dolce 96 pistol. So that's um, basically we've now jumped from, from a revolver to a semi-automatic pistol. Semi-automatic's like completely new thing of that era, right? Like basically prototype level like they've just been around a few years people are still experimenting it will take them a good couple of years uh, into the 20th century in order to perfect that so what we have here is a semi-automatic that doesn't even have a magazine so it's being reloaded like a bolt action with stripper clips so i'm just going to fire a couple rounds off 
And you can see as I reload that weapon, it will just open up and top off in the original round, similar to the revolver. However, the, uh, the the Dodge pistol has one advantage, is that it can load also as from a critical clip. If I completely empty that weapon, I just put in a 10 round clip and I'm ready to go right away. So that obviously makes that weapon very appealing if there's like hordes of enemies up ahead of you. Because just like emptying your entire magazine, you can have another full magazine very quickly. Topping up, so for example, just having a few rounds in, I'm gonna quickly reset that one so I have more extra ammunition again. Just basically shooting all but one round. Yeah, that's the worst case. So now, one by one, now in nine rounds to be inserted. Take some time. So knowing your weapons, knowing how to play with them, knowing how to operate them, um, that's super important in this game. And it's something which uh, many of the weapons have these little pros and cons, and learning that is just a very important part of our game. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you, actually, before we move on to the rifles, is I'm going to spawn in a couple of enemies. And I do so first by... Having the first one spawn in front of me unaware, so he doesn't know I'm here at the moment, I can freely walk around to him, he will never react. Now, what I want to demonstrate with this is basically that it matters where you hit the enemies. So we have different body locations, you can shoot him in the arms, I have damage state for that one. If he were holding like a, um, a torch or a knife, he would have lost it by now, so you can, can use that to kind of like uh, disarm enemies so that they become less powerful when they run up against you. Obviously, uh, you can also do the classic headshot, get rid of them, it's the most efficient way. If I spawn in another one, uh, shooting the legs, for example, has an advantage because from now on he can only move very slowly towards you. So if you have several of these guys coming at you, I'm going to disable the AI uh, ignoring now, so they will actually come for me. Otherwise, I can try to shoot one in the leg and deal with his uh, buddy first while he is slurping towards me and then take him out afterwards. So that type of, of detail in the gunplay is very important for us to show because you want to be strategic about how you take out the enemies. And some weapons work better for that, so if I go back to our pistol we had before, I just have these six shots, right? Well, actually seven shots. So, shooting here and then with the weapon, see, he will try to hit me eventually. So again, trying to be efficient, do headshots, slow them down with leg shots, etc. helps you to, you see, like I have like two rounds left from the seven to kind of like survive and be able to tell the tale. Um, now moving forward, we have a couple other weapons, so I'm going to quickly use our little nice awesome cheat tool here we have. Obviously you won't be able to get that later on, sorry. As uh, we can change out the weapons, and we're going to take uh, on one side our double barrel shotgun first, as the first weapon. And we shot a Vetterly rifle, you guys have seen as a concept earlier, and then the rendering for earlier, uh, as a second weapon. So this is the classic double barrel shotgun, as you know it from so many other games. Um, what this does, obviously, it has two barrels, which means you can fire them in sequence. Fire one barrel, fire the other barrel. Now, as you see, basically reloading this means you reload both shells at the same time, and you're good, ready to go. If you just fire one shell, you see like one hammer is, uh, is still like in the back position, the other one is forward. If I reload now, obviously it just replaces the one round that has actually been spent. Um, now, with the double barrel shotgun gives me the chance to be kind of tactical, and shotguns in our game are actually really close to what a real shotgun is. So if you think shotgun games, you usually think like, like whatever is on the screen gets destroyed, but actually real shotguns do have a certain amount of precision. I'm going to demonstrate it in a second. With this one guy here. So that obviously if I just shoot him at that point here, he gets most of those pellets uh, easily and dies. I'm just going to spawn a couple more in. And again, I can use the tactically, trying to dismember him, trying to slow him down. Shotguns are brutal up close. Like, this is the, one of the most powerful weapons you can get uh, in our game if you're close by. But obviously, you're kind of limited from the amount of shots you have. Now, if I spawn a couple more in, trying to back off a little bit from me. We'll see as I try to run from me, don't kill me. Being able to just, like, damage them. See, this one here only got like, a little bit of that shotgun. So he's wounded, but he's still alive. Like, being able to just kind of, like, Precisely make sure you hit is important with the shotgun too, as it is with a rifle. Um, our next weapon I'm going to show you is our Vetterly rifle. So again, I'm going to go quickly on our little cheat menu. And swap that out. So now this is the rifle that Alex has shown a little bit more in detail previously. The, the Vetterly rifle is like the, the Swiss Army rifle of that era. Um, it's um, kind of interesting because uh, on one hand it is a bolt-action rifle. So, you operate it like a Mosin Nagant or any other bolt action rifle. 
but it is actually from a mechanic point of view it is more of a like a like a repeater rifle so you can kind of put rounds in all the time and you really only use the bolt action as you would do the lever action on like a repeater rifle um, so very interesting weapon also very interesting uh, one we didn't really knew about so some of things where again like research is kind of nice like digging through like all sorts of forgotten weapons and uh, vintage weapons and just like getting to know all these things which existed at the time which i think only very few people are aware of mm -hmm. um now this weapon is interesting also because uh, it is a bit of a mid-range, mid-damage weapon. So it's not quite as powerful as the Mosi Nagant, like it's our high-powered bolt action rifle. Um, it's more of a run-and-gun type of weapon, it's a bit faster the way you can fire it. Um, but it suffers obviously from one problem, which is that if I completely empty it, just as I explained before with the, uh, the repeater rifles, if it's completely empty and I reload the weapon, We'll just put one round in. I need to kind of like charge that bolt action one more time before I can actually fire the weapon. Now, since I now have a weapon, I have to have the weapon with one round chambered already, I can just quickly reload and just top up. Oh, just two more rounds in there. Easy. No bolt action required. So it's like these type of mechanics we have in the weapons, which really adds a lot of like depth and and just like a rich um, uh, like amount of features for the players to learn. And it's something we're really proud of. Alex, if you want to say some points about uh, the weapon, I mean, it's basically showing off some of that uh, really nice artwork. Um, yeah, so um, uh, fun fact, for example, just for um, because we mentioned the representative state earlier, and this is the final quality that we uh, want to ship. Um, the Dolch that you saw earlier, and also the uh, double barrel shotgun, for example, you saw earlier, these are weapons that are on representative state. Yeah. So usually you won't see, um, uh, let's say, um, most of you w won't see that much of a difference, but again, um, upon close inspection, uh, the, the, the final quality level will be much, much better, better. And yeah, talking about the uh, Vetterly uh, Vetter rifle now, um, in this case, um, the uh, internal mechanics are halfway open. So for example, if the bolt action is, um, um, uh, is performed, you can actually see parts of the bolt um, being, being shown. Um, is even in third person, so we take uh, we, we, we take a lot of um, um, effort in basically getting um, the internal parts that you actually can see um, um, right. So we're not modeling out all the internal parts. Some games do, we don't because um, that requires a lot of effort and a lot of resources also. And actually, a real gun has many 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 parts. So we're talking about probably fifty uh, to maybe a hundred parts, depending on on complexity. And having all those little screws modeled out and textured, while only a small percentage of those are actually being shown from the outside, that is, yeah, um, we rather put those resources in different in different spots. More Maybe guns. More AI or more monsters, more guns. whatever. More <laughs> guns, yes. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, this gun comes in, in certain variations. So um, it comes with a bayonet, for example. So we have a variation with a bayonet, which we will show later. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the elevator um, element that you can see when you when you perform the uh, shooting, so you can see this uh, in the iron side. Uh, you can't, I you barely the, can see it. Shot in the shoulder. Yeah, basically yeah. you can see the elevator moving up and delivering, basically uh, causing the empty shell to to be uh, to be ejected, and uh, putting um, the next round up and um, putting the next round into the chamber. The bullets in this gun are stored in a pipe underneath the barrel, actually. So there's room for um, six bullets. I think seven, yeah. <laughs> and one is the chamber. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point, Alex. Dennis. Uh, I trained you well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that's basically what we have to say about this weapon, I think. Yeah. So it's one of the really recent additions we have. That's why we want to really show that today to you as yes. well. Um, so one thing uh, I want to talk a little bit about, like we talked about the aiming, which is uh, a bit different from other games, but uh, as you will see, to the better. Um, what we've also is, uh, obviously melee is part of this. You've seen me doing a couple of melee attacks before. So melee in our game, as you see on the yellow bar on the bottom, takes stamina. So we can do our regular melee attacks, or like a short attack, uh, pushing them away, crowd controlling them. Eventually that kills them. But there's also the way to actually do heavy attacks. So this is just basically me holding the melee button down. And then in this case, because I have just like a regular rifle, I will just do a, like a nice butt step attack. And that obviously does more damage, but takes more stamina. No? That was cool. You actually have to aim the melee attack because you yes. failed on the butt attack. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, do, I did fail on the butt attack. That's very right. <laughs> uh, 
But it's also like if you if you run out of stamina, uh, for example, you just have the tired attack, right? So everything slows down. You still do enough damage, but I mean, you get kind of worn out. And uh, if you have like still like three, four, five enemies surrounding you, you you better want to like run away, try to find like advantage point, maybe reload a weapon. So uh, there's a certain economy behind that. We want to make sure that you just don't like basically go silently through the entire game, just melee killing everything you find. But the moment you have escalated an enemy zone to you, the melee can only help you so much. Unless obviously you bring like a proper melee weapon, like putting blades on it, which might then kill an enemy you just with a single strike, depending on what you what weapon you have and what enemy it is. But yeah, this is basically what we have from the rifle side. We're gonna quickly um, show you um, the dynamite as well. So just have like a dynamite panel here. So I talked about this is like one of those really massive ones. Um, what we have uh, since recently here is our aim help system. So this is really nice because it allows us to really precisely position where that thing should throw. As I mentioned before, like dynamite and like fire bombs and that type of stuff, they are consumables, which means uh, eventually, once you've used them in your mission, they're gone and you need to restock on them. So obviously, if you want to use them, you want to make sure they're very reliable to use. So you want to be able to like like chuck them through that window or like precisely put them in the middle of that group of enemies. So uh, we're still working a little bit on obviously the art side of that helper, but functionally it's already there. So I can basically very reliably place that grenade at that particular point here and hopefully step back because it's going to make a bit better room. And uh, that allows us to basically blow things up. We'll do a lot more of that in a second when we return and actually have our mission running. So this so much has been on the editor side, so I guess we see you guys back in a couple minutes when we're actually in the game. So thank you. Thank you.
Well, hello. Okay. All right. So we, we are. are back here at the beginning of the mission. Um, let's look around. So we are in the north side uh, of the map, close yes. to the outbreak middle number. Um, which I think this should be our first one to try to see if you can get a clue towards the monster. Um, monster always is going to be at one of those man-made locations across the map. So either we find a monster or we find a clue towards the monster. Uh, the other teams are with us here. We don't know how many. Um, they are actually trying to do the same thing. So I can already hear some shots close by. Oh yeah. So let's uh, quickly look, have a look at the equipment before we move on. So I brought a Winfield rifle. It's basically a repeated rifle. It uses pistol ammunition but it has lots of shots. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, and as a backup, I have actually uh, the Dolch pistol we had before, but this is a precision version, which means it has a has a buttstock, so it gives me much more like like stable firing. I can use it more as a as a carbine. Uh, besides that, I have a flashlight. I brought a couple of fusies, so these are like the road flares I mentioned earlier. Brought some dusters, so if things get serious. Um, on top of that, I have a couple of dynamite sticks on me as well. So I think. As I mentioned before, I do like dynamite sticks. <laughs> All right, what you got? Yeah, uh, I got the Vettelie that I talked about. This time with a bayonet, stabby stabby. And um, the Nagant revolver that you were explaining uh, just before, mm -hmm. in the regular version. Which is a basic, No yeah. fancy stuff on it. And as for the tools, one lamp. I think night mission requires a lamp. Um, one bandage, so I can patch us up. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. And for the super urgent and uh, uh, situations, I got a Derringer, a pocket revolver. A little pocket gun. Yeah, that's yes. always cool. They never expect that one. Uh, um, a fire bottle. Oh, I thought you brought some booze. Okay. Okay. And um, the famous concertina. Cool. That will nice. give us an edge. All right, then let's mm, catch up a little bit, because I think the other teams are probably already getting a head start. Um, so if we use dark side, we can see that the next clue, it's like you see this orangely uh, looking thingy, is oh, yeah. kind of like in a southeastern direction. This is also the same direction that Albrecht Middle Number is at, so this will be where we try to find our first clue. Okay, so you lead the way. Right, let's try not to cross the open water too much, because like you're going to have to wait through that a little bit, slows you down, so if another team catches you while you're crossing water, usually not a good place to be so moving at the edges being conscious we are we're in the swamps right like so it's not always easy going so i kind of try to approach so it. there's the uh restock um, yeah. wagon so we can like go back there in case yeah we let's keep that in mind like that's good there's a couple of ah oh we triggered them oh, no. These birds always trade them. There's a couple on, on the right here, but well, we can just walk past them. Let's get up a little bit on high ground here, see if we can get to that. Get a clue. Might be in one of the main buildings or nearby. I hear some shots in the south, so there's definitely another team there. So they might be maybe around the Blanchard Grave or Lock Base Docks area. But still far out, the shots are rigged in. Oh, there's a gun behind the, the Oh yes, yeah, there's an armored. Let's see if we can move around the other side maybe. Yeah. See if we can hive on the roof. Yeah, uh, there's more birds up ahead. Let's see if we can just some. maybe move past them undetected. Heard some shots. Uh, they're very jumpy today. But luckily no grunts were were alerted. So I'm gonna use dark side again. Um it's to the north northeast a little bit across. There's a couple of feeders there on the side. I think we get past those. Uh, there's another hive up there on the on that uh, walkway for the yep. lumber for the lumber pieces. Seven. I think she hasn't seen us yet. So let's just type sneak through, remain undetected as much as we can. All right, there's one guy up ahead actually here. All right, so we're getting closer to the clue. Ah, this one has seen me. Uh, wait, I, I, I kill him. Yeah, do this. Good, did you have a bayonet? That helps. Alright, so we have like what, explosive barrels around here. They are usually dangerous to stay around. Oh, oh ah, that was me. I ran into the, those baskets here. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we've triggered them all now. Alright, let's move inside here quickly. Okay. So you can find a clue inside the lumber mill. Already hear something. Yes. So when you're close by, like you can usually get like this purple effect. So and looking for some flickering lights usually helps a lot. I think it's around. Yeah, it's probably in the other room around the corner. Yep, there we go. Um, do you cover me? I'm gonna take it up. Yep. Watch your back. 
right, so the first clue it is. So we know now the boss is not around us. Okay, okay. in this case, um, let's maybe go a little bit more towards the center. I would suggest we move towards the Alice Farm area and see if we can find a second clue there. All right. So it is a little bit to the uh, southeast. Oh, there's a high threatened. Right, right. I can I hear it outside. Yeah, it's uh, it's to the to the northeast. The uh, let's so see if he, if he can if he can take the that that uh, number uh, conveyor belt thingy here. Just go around here, but so we can just drop down nearby. So I just jump, I'm jump in the high stack. I'm gonna take her out. He's shown us outside. Yeah. Right on the left. I see like dogs, dogs are dead. Okay, that's fair enough, we can move on anyways. Okay. There's a couple dogs on the left. I think we should be fine. The horse is still alive. Oh, Put out our misery. Come on, horse is to suffer. I heard a couple of shots still in the east northeast as far as I can tell. It's probably there's like another team around the Puerto Rico area. Can't see anything. As it's so important to like always build up your mental map here, so you always understand roughly what's happening in a session around here. Uh, there's a couple of guys there. Uh, one has a torch in his hand. I'm trying to try yeah. to take him out with That's a headshot. Two headshots, you take the left one. Yeah, take the left one. Go for it, go for it. If you hit the head. <laughs> Oh, there's another one around the, around the, the box wagon. Yes. So, there's some ammo. Alright, let's see. Refill. Oh, let's, let's move along, along the road a little bit longer here. I think that leads us to this dam that should get us um, across that narrow here. And then we can move on to Alice Farm. Okay, to the east. I, I never risk going up there. I always go down the secondary path. I don't want to get shot. Yeah, you have a, a large silhouette, right? Alright, there's more shots around. Actually, again, yeah, I already failed on rule number one. Always reload your gun. So. Okay, here's the next compound. We know already, though, that this compound, there were livestock, doesn't have a clue for us anymore. So we're just gonna bypass this one. Okay. Let's just follow the road here. There's a couple of dogs ahead. I think we have to fight our way through them. Yes. Um, we could use a firebomb. You wanna, you wanna burn them? Well, just make sure that it's gonna be quick because... Okay, take your time. Take it. We're getting a bit closer. Take your time. I haven't seen this yet. Nice. nice. Oh. I think that that's solved like that one for us. Alright, just, just run past there. So there's an area here on the right that isn't burning. We might be able to sneak through. Uh, so the the windfield abroad uh, actually has a speed loader, so like that's what's called a swift. Um, it's like if I fire a couple rounds off, I can quickly put like a seven rounds triple clip into the side, like where I just put normal round in, and that gives me like easy refill. So in case we are on a fire, I can actually like spam a little bit with this weapon. There's a hive down the down the uh, down in the um, dam. Okay, let's follow the road a little bit more. Yeah. Also hides in the field to the, to the left. Mm -hmm. Those dog packs, they're usually around the roads and the open fields. So I might run into another one, let's see. Okay, so this is the, it's the Alice farm. So this is where we want to have a second clue. So I'm going to go dark side. It looks like it's either in the main building, the main barn, or somewhere behind that one. Um, do you want to cross the mm. open field here, or you want to just sneak a little bit more and more safely? Um, we could, we could go to, to that windmill tower on the right side. Yeah. Just see a hive in the open field. I'm scanning for other players. I don't see any yet, so it might be safe. But let's, let's stay stay close with this one. Right. Um, ah, this part again. It's, that horsey is already gone. Alright, well, let's let's get ourselves into this one here. Um, I'm gonna use my brass knuckles on the first guy. It's right. just one. Can you keep an eye out on, on, on the other on the other half? I think that hit. All right, just take her out. Nice. 
There's a couple here in the fields, but they can't they can't get to us. They can't we get can't to us. Get to so watch out with the swarm that's all lingers around a little bit there. Uh, sneak them to the right side a little bit. Come to me. Come oh, to me. Careful, she's right here. Just, just push through past me. Push through past me. I'm gonna cover you. Move a little bit to the right side around. I'm trying to get to the main building there. Okay, another two grands coming in. Hmm? Just keep on moving, keep on moving. I'm gonna push through a little bit. Come on. It works out for you? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Alright, so they definitely know we're here now as well. So let's see. Looks like on the left side. Ah, there we go. I found a clue. Um, you're gonna take it. I'm gonna cover you. It's here around the um, around left side corner. Yeah, I, I get it. So watch out for other players being around. Okay, got it. So now that means. Someone on the right side. Um, I guess we push right in the center, huh? Let's go to still yeah. water. So, it's shaky here. So how do we get out of this place? Ah, live. Well, there's a couple feeders over here. Mm -hmm. um, let's move, yeah, let's push roughly in southeast until we get to the exit. Let's try not to run, sneak a little bit. Something has something detected them. Take him out. To the left side there, this little boathouse or something here we can walk. This one's on the left side. Gonna push through. Yeah, yeah. Behind you, you're yeah, pre yeah. pretty close to the ground. Oh, there's more here. Oh dear. Oh, shit. Oh. It's always the special to come back to, right? Love these dusters. Okay. okay. Uh, this is a little makeshift bridge here. Let's get across there. I'm poisoned, but I think it should wear off soon. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Uh, you need any bandages? I mean, I think you brought one, right? You should be able to um, just patch yourself yeah, up quickly. Yeah, um, but I, I only got two health chunks, so this one will, re will regenerate. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm still good. So, just watch just need to take it slow for a moment. I see a little bit here. Okay, what's your ammunition saying? So that I hear shots in the south southeast. Okay. But you can't Careful. see us here. Maybe put out your flashlight. There might still be something going on around that area. Let's be a bit careful. Let's see if we can maybe observe somewhere. There's a grant. There's a few grants yeah, to the, the south. open field. You see them? To the right. Boom. Yeah, there's more shots down there. From, from where are they coming? I can. Um, I tell. could swear this was coming directly from from the Stillwater area. There's a hive down the down the hill. I can see her flies. Yeah. That actually might be the remnants of a hive. It could be that maybe another team's already killed a hive here, so that's obviously a good tell for us. Yeah, there's definitely a firefight going on there. Southeast, south side. Yes. Still sounds a couple hundred meters out. And yeah, that's you hear the dogs? They are definitely there's definitely players around. They All right, maybe we can Oh, there we go. Alright. So another team's already been there. But we are, we are in a good position, right? I mean, so um, we should get visuals on the on the compound. Yeah, let's let's be careful with this one. There might be many teams around, so I don't want to just dive in there. Maybe we can pick some um, if they leave. So what we see is like the ways for them to leave is they have uh, two ex uh, three exits actually. So there's one exit in the northeast, one exit in the southeast, and one in the far west. Uh, it means they have three ways of trying to get that that bounty out. So if you use dark side at the moment, just shows us where the banishing is happening, which is directly in the center of this. So this might be one of those underground caves there. I really don't want to go down there. Um, so let's try to see if we can maybe set up a ambush for them. It's, we just should not get entangled in firefight with the other teams that are around doing the same thing. Okay. Um, my suggestion. So I think if I if I were at Stillwater right now trying to defend the bounty and trying to make a way out, I wouldn't take the obvious route. I would I would expect there be ambushes on the way. So I would go for the furthermost one. Let mm -hmm. me let's let's just try to assume that. 
and maybe it's, it's a bit risky, but maybe we are lucky and we actually can intercept them more on that west I side. I think they, they go to the central pathway that leads into the, the compound here. Yeah, it could be. Let's get a little bit closer there. I'm not sure if they what they killed or what's left around. I see a couple traps, a couple barrels. It's always dangerous ground. Uh, yeah, maybe let's let's we sneak. Let's, let's open though. Yeah, let's let's another. sneak on the right side. Get across the road here. There's like uh, like some some cornfields and high, high grass. Okay, so we still have half the time left for the banishing. So we have a moment still to coordinate. Oh dear. Yeah, I really don't like cornfields. There's shots behind us. Wait, I, I, can, I can see muzzle. This, this, Where is muzzle it? Flashes. Give me a bearing. Uh, on the western side, I would say maybe 300 meters out. They might be heading for the supply point there. You see the fires on the right side between the um, between the trees on, on the little foothill? I think they were heading for that one, but they're still far out. We might be able to snatch that thing from them before they right. get close. But here's an opening. There go. Yeah, it's vanishing is happening here. Gonna get inside. No, it seems they've killed most of the monsters Maybe around. Go under, under, under the house. Okay, let, let's scout the entrances and see where they might come out. Which of other players around? I can, I can, I can. Show me. Somewhere down here. Somewhere There's still some on the other side. Well, anyway, you can lead and then just follow. Yeah, okay. I'm going to spook him a little bit. I'm going to take one of those fuses. And I'm going to throw him down that chair. Wait. And then let's solve him a little bit. Just come to me now. Yeah. I'm going to move around Let the other side. Through. Alright, the banishing is complete. I will make a run for it now. So let's see where they come up. Right, there's some stairs here. Um, just they're stuck behind this corner here. Wait for them to come up. Let me match. Uh, use dark side again to see if you can find the bounty. So they're still on the ground central somewhere. Okay. Right, there's a drop on him right now, come on. Oh, let's be careful now. Oh, oh. Sure, there's plenty of monsters. Killed one, you killed the other? Yeah. Down there, down there. One one's left. You know what? Grab one of the bounty pieces. Grab the one from the guy's there. I cover the entrance. Grab one. You have it? See if you can pick uh, it up. Think... All right, so we can get there. Okay, I have one. I have one. Let's let's call this a day. Oh, he's burning gas here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Let's make a run for it. We go for the west okay. one this time. Yeah. Let's take the field again. So we have one of the bounty pieces. The other team has the other one. With a bit of luck, now people, whoever's left here, they kind of divide between us. So we have to just oh, be shit. careful. Just there will ah, be others ambushing us. <laughs> you need some help? Yeah, no, it's okay. It's just like, ah, uh, there you are. I, lo I lost uh, orientation. Um, yeah. If you can see that burning church tower in the distance yeah, southwest, use, the, use this as a bearing. That's the right. Okay. Getting across here. Right, so. You still have your Constantino bomb? Oh yeah, I could, I could block it up. Yeah, just see if you can maybe block that area off a little bit there. Try some time. Nice. Alright, there's a little of a lake ahead. Let's, let's move left out around the lake. Okay. You can restock to the left. Yeah, if you want to. Looking from the map, yeah, let's move, let's move south side around the, the Healing Waters Church. It's a bit exposed here, but it should be fine. You know this map in and out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Just scanning if there's anything. Oh. See, they're still, they're still fighting over the, the remnants. Okay. So sometimes it's better just get some bounty rather than trying to get it all. Like, um, should, I think Maybe we can. Okay. There's an armored right ahead of us. 
Uh, let me see if I can just blow them up. Some, um... yeah, just give me a sec, give me a sec. Let's see, he has notices here. <laughs> right on his butt. Let's see if we kill him. Yep, I think he's gone. Alright, good. And it's gone. Alright. Some more shots. So they're still fighting around Stillwater. So with a bit of luck, really, we got them. We got them all on the other bounty, and they're ignoring us because we might be too far out because we made a better dashboard. Okay. So high fear. Just you tell me when you're ready to fire. We can take our together. All ready. All right, shoot. Pardons. The party gets. Uh, the party but it's really distracting from aiming. So we're getting there. This, we're actually coming by a supply station on the road. I can already see it actually there. Uh, this this box wagon with the red light. Let's see if we can just grab some some. some oh, this Helen's right ahead. All right. I got yeah. I got another uh, a firebomb. No, but this will this will block the path for us. We need All to right. go through it. Let's, let's just kill him. Huh? Let's just shoot him. I haven't seen this yet. Done. Oh, that was good. Like when these things go aggro, like you better uh, run for your really life. Up. Like they they're they're so they're tear you apart so quickly. No right, let's, let's actually stay on the other side of that fence. It's more yeah, shelter. So in the open, right? Yeah. So we passed the crematorium. Can we see the towers? So yeah, we just need to follow that road basically towards the exit. Just always look back. Here's some ammunition. Always using the dark side when trying to pick something up. You can see where the other bounty is, that way. So, like the other bounty is still in the, somewhere in the northeast. Whoever has yeah, it where now. The, where the lighting is, right? Yeah, wherever, wherever, whoever has it now. <laughs> Might not be the guy who picked it up originally. <laughs> All right, there's like a little choke point over the bridge. Let's see if there's any enemies around, or if you. Oh, there we are. Okay. Okay. Um, I would suggest. I think it would a good, was a good idea to go to extract here because the other extraction points will be hot by now, I think. Uh, let's just wait through the water. Just push through. Hey, they are coming on the other side. Right. I'll be able to make a run for it. So it's, watch out if you can see the green light appearing somewhere in the, uh, in the distance already. That's where the extraction point is. I think I see it somewhere. Yeah, in the far distance. Okay, there. Like maybe another 100, 150 meters. All right, just push through. I just wanna wanna ring the bell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there it is. Oh, see it. Yeah, that's a safe one. Right, yeah, it's like another bridge ahead. That's what he said before the ambush happens, right? Yeah. We really got it. Yeah, so let's be a bit more careful. Do you see any hunters? Any towers? Oh, there's a meathead in the, in the compound to the left. Yeah, I hear him. Okay, we're getting closer to the exit. Just trying to climb up those rocks here. Alright, just be careful, there might still be enemies around here, camping, having the same idea we had initially. Okay. So as long as you extract together with me, because I'm the one holding the bounty, you will still get the same benefit. So we still get a team bonus. Alright, get close? Yeah. That's good. Right, just hold out here for a few seconds, just buck it down, spread out a little bit, but buck it down. Extraction in three, two, mm -hmm. one. Yay! Done. That was good. Cool. We made it out alive. Good job, Alex. Yeah. So and we made we profit. Can... Right. So uh, let's cuddle up here quickly. So basically, um, it was a good round. So uh, yeah. I didn't really expect us to have a, like that easy snatch. Like they took him totally by surprise there uh, when they came up. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, that was <laughs> was lucky. Uh, but uh, we think but, it was but, like. But we only got one guy, right? Uh, we only one. The other one yeah, retreated into the tunnel. So like. Yeah. Uh, so so I throw a fire bottle down there. So that yeah. Gave us some time. <laughs> I hope so. so. <laughs> things like so we we could have tried to push on. We tried to like like go into the tunnels, take him out as well. Maybe get the second but that bounty. Was his best bet actually to go down because. Yes. Um, that was really disadvantageous for them. 
with a bit of luck, maybe he might have even like revived uh, his partner afterwards when we were gone. And maybe they even made it out as well with the bounty. So let's see. Maybe later on we know more what happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. I was enjoying that one. So basically, yeah, we haven't mentioned that Marcus. Uh, will drop by later, yeah, right? so so basically, uh, Marcus, our lead lead animator, uh, he's uh, gonna drop by later on for the Q and A session as well. He's one of the guys playing against us. So whether we actually just shot him or whether he was just roaming the field somewhere around, we don't know. Well, hope he has he has some more insights for us. Are you doing another round? Yep, and yes, uh, basically, so we are basically getting ready for like the second round now, I guess. Cool. So the hunt, our hunter still lives, so we could go with the same, or we take a different one. Yeah, let's 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 do different ones because we need yeah. to show some some additional weapons That's and stuff. True. Let's go.
right. Okay. Guess we're back. Here we go. Hello. Hi. So this is the second mission we're gonna play today. Um, so Alex and I are trying to kill the spider. Um, so this time around we brought a bit of different equipment. Um, so Alex, you wanna start talking about yours first? Um, yeah, I got the Romero 77 shotgun. So that was the one we discussed earlier. Um, it's a single barrel shotgun, so I really have to take care of when to reload and when not. Mm -hmm. And as a backup plan, uh, when the reload is not happening oh, nice. uh, fast enough, I have the cold chain gun, which gives me plenty of ammunition. Also, of course, a light, because night mission, some yep. fusies, uh, stealth knife. <laughs> Good, you're, so you're, you're um, also a knife guy. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and a dynamite stick, because yeah, it worked out for you. And a fire bottle. Nice. Okay, so I mixed my equipment a little bit as well. So I brought what first looks like a shotgun, but actually is not. It's not an express rifle. So this is what you use for big game hunting. It's like an elephant rifle, basically. Um, so what I'm going to focus with this one, because you can see I don't really have much ammunition on it, is um, I'll try to take on the big guys. So any sort of like small can fodder is for you. And I'm trying to focus on like the big armored guys and the boss. Um, as a backup, I brought a Nagan pistol and have a silencer on that one, so I can kind of use it a little bit more covert. Obviously, it's a weak weapon, so I need to be very precise or have a couple of shots hit. Um, besides that, I also brought a flashlight. Um, I have a couple of fusies. I brought my dusters again because I like them. And a firebomb, a big dynamite bundle, just in case. And also a concertina bomb, like you had in the last mission. Cool. All right, cool. Then I would say, let's see where we are. We're in the north. Um, I think we should just maybe follow that main road there and get somewhere more in the center. Maybe maybe yeah. we can pick a clue around Depending there. Depending on what is there, stuff. we can like go left and right or something. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's move a little bit more to this left side here or until we get to the road. Alright, there we go, that's the road here. So this is Port Raker on our left, it's one of the bigger commands. Oh, I just heard some fire in the west even. Okay. So we're gonna move past Port Raker. It's one of the larger areas we have in the game, yeah, lots of like warehouses and... Uh, like, oh, that's close. It's, it's on the list There's also enemies past Port Raker in the east, I can hear. Right. See if you can gonna get pushed through a little bit here. All right, that's one way. What's behind you? Oh. One is down. Okay. And there's hounds again. All right. Uh, How we do it? Yeah, let's, let's move a little bit through the side there. I think the pack might be moving off to the, to the right side there. In case they become aggressive, you will have to bring them down. <laughs> so again, I only no I, I, I can kill one. I can kill him very, very, very nicely. Just, just, but just let us use the uh, fire bottle then. Okay, just get, get it ready just in case. I have my science pistol in case I need to shoot. Where are they? I can't you. see them. Yeah, on the left side, on the left side. Behind the hill. See if we can sneak past them. They're super lethal. They're still around there. Yeah, let's just crouch. We might need to open up on them. I will do. Alright, let's sneak a little bit further. Here they come, they have seen us. Need to fire. Yes, fire the bomb. Nice. Alright, run for it, run. Let's go across the bridge. One survives. Sure, there might be one still alive. Just get across, look back all the time, just in case. Might be chasing us. So, oh, we got, I think we're we good. Got lucky. All right. Okay, we stuck. Oh, yeah. Always anything. Alright, so let's use the ammo box. We use it, then they can't use it. That's good. Alright, so the clue has to be somewhere on the left side inside livestock. Go through the gate. Some ravens on the left, which I don't 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 get lost in place. Move on the right. Let's get inside of here. It's a bit of a dangerous trap, but we can open it up from the inside. Right, I'm gonna go. Uh, should we close the door? Close it behind us. There's like a lever on the left side. I'm gonna open up the inner one now. Uh, just, you go first, and then you hold it up for me. Is it up? Get off in my head. 
<laughs> Alright. So yeah, that certainly looks like a pig farm. There's dead pigs here. Okay, we should be not so Alright, keep in mind, we have a couple of barrels here next to the exits. Yeah, that's good. That's so, um, yeah, but just be careful because they, they might just shoot at them, right? And there's a pickup up um, um, on the barrel um, over there. Let's get into, into the main building. Uh, let's, let's move around to the right side a little bit, see if you can find the door or something. Something in that barn. I don't want to open that door. Oh, wait, I hear I hear some movement. So that, I hear some clicking. Yeah, that could that could could, could it, it be? Could it be? Maybe it's. A, yep, I'm pretty sure we just ran into the spider. Okay. Okay. Let's check it. Um, so yeah, I guess we are the lucky ones who found the spider in our first compound. Um, okay, so um, maybe we just check in here, right? Yeah, this one is blocked. We need to smash the door in. Just use the butt of your rifle a couple times. Alright, yep, we're definitely in the right place here. Alright, let's see if you can bring her down quickly. You got your... Somewhere I think above. Yep, oh, I see her directly above us. Oh dear. Okay, let's move a little bit to the side here. Try not to run into all these hooks because they can make noise. And then there's other players already around, not too far off from the sound of shots. So if you can see if you can if you can bring all down. Where is it? It's on the far end. Ah, uh, it's up the here it comes. Oh dear. Behind you, behind you. Oh, jumped me. Alright, I'm slightly poisoned. I need to pull back a little bit. I'm reloading my gun. Ah, it's around me. You? It's still around me. Shit. Alright. See if I can reload my rifle. If I hit it, I can bring it down very quickly. I just have to hit it. Oh, it's here. On my side. It's just run past me. Ooh. Okay, fast little bugger. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's, I start the vanish. Wait, 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 wait for a second. Wait for a second. Let's look around first. So right, right they up. might they might have heard the gunfire, but we might still be alone here. Careful. So I see an explosive barrel on the left side. There's like an entrance here that the gate is is open. We might be able to close that. Oh, that's close. Um. You started banishing. I'm, I jumped on the left side, basically close that gate, and then I come back up into inside. So we can uh, hunker down a little bit. Uh, for exits, I would suggest we just try to rust, run across the middle number. So we go for the close. So we can make it. Uh, let's the exit. Yes. Right? Um, yeah, the northern one, exactly. Um, see if there's any doors you can close, anything that helps us to kind of bunker down a little bit. She's probably hiding here somewhere in the, in the darkness. Um, also, like the Audi AI here, they will kind of play to our advantage at the moment because we kind of went inside this compound without killing much. So, whoever is trying to take this from us will have to fight all the AI, which is pretty good. You could right. light up the, the, the area a bit outside. Yeah, maybe just throw like one or two fuses in some of the poor little places to do it here. I'm gonna throw some across the fields here as well. Makes it easier to spot in case they're coming. Um, so let's split up a little bit. I'm gonna hunker down in this part of the barn. All right. Uh, to see yeah. if you can maybe observe the west northwestern side a little bit. I'll let you know once I see something. Can't see him yet. Somewhere around where we throw the fusy. Right, halfway through. I keep in mind I only have like six shots here. Alright. Let's throw some. Two with a gun, eight total. I see place on the left side, on the left side. Coming in northeast, northeast. Northeast. 
I think I got one, I'm not sure. I think I hit one, but I definitely know that I'm here now. Um, they might come in from the north side. I'm not sure if it's one or two still. Quarters done. I, I hear players. I hear players on the north. Oh, sorry, on, on, on the south, southwest. Might be multiple teams. I hear some as West now. Yeah. Then the building next to us. Yeah, just open the door. Come on, do it. Open it. I'm sneaking. No, you're not sneaking anymore. One down. Directly before in front of us. Um, that was on the west side. Well, I'd love to fight, but I'm scared now. Play as soon as I'm gonna buy some time. Ah! I set something on fire there on the, on the west side. Get ready to pick up the samples. Meet me at the point. Let's Ooh, pick up your sample. Yeah. Um, let's just jump over the railing here, move uh, to the east side, where we kill the one guy. Let's make a run for it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Behind you! Alright. Come, come through, close the door. Uh, grenade, right. move, move. Ah, I think one blew up there. <laughs> Alright, let's see, see if we can get in the undergrowth a little bit. To the left, to the left, in the field, there's one. Left in the field. I see him moving. I'm going for the knife again. Yeah, it's just a run there. Come on, don't, don't, get, don't get distracted. Let's go for the extraction. Let him be. Shit. The revolver didn't do anything. Let's see. So the exit is on the northwest side. You know what? Okay, just come, yeah, come up there. That's a good point. We might have more ambushing us. They might do the same thing to us as we did in the last round. To them. Okay. I'll wait for you to catch up. Yeah. Just walk past me. Okay. Right, let's take a left here. Cut across the water. The guy that we encountered, he was attacked by a gun in the yeah. same in the same. I way. don't think I killed a team though. I always kill just single guys. Um, it could be that they've been keeping reviving each other, so they might still be all up against us. Okay, so yeah. they, they can kind of see where we are. We should stick to the trees next to the road, but now it's a bit open here in the area. Just keep moving. Why they're not following us so much? You can still see the compound. Oh, you know what, Alex? <laughs> take a look, take a look at the top left corner. Uh, I carry a piece of bounty, oh, no. but you didn't pick it up. <laughs> yeah, I... That's that's why it's still there. Which is actually, in this case, it's still probably saved our lives because they couldn't decide which one to go for. I, I, I was standing right up, right, right on top of it and pressed the button. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. But in the end, this, this might have been the best thing that could have happened to us. Because it kind of kept us out of harm a little bit. This is like, yeah, we could have had it all. No, it's alright. But maybe they take the same spot so we could ambush them. Because no, let's, 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 let's wait for a second here. And just looks like it misses. If the bounty moves up, it's still there. The moment it looks like this at this compound. So you, you, you want to be greedy and try to pick up the second sample, because I, I strongly dis, uh, like advise not to do that. <laughs> uh, let's just cut our losses. What do you think? You call, you decide. At least I can blame you if you both die then. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, did you still have the concertina, right? Yes, I still have some stuff there. Let's just, uh, I mean, let's, yeah, maybe, maybe we should just wait, wait for, for a bit and see if it, if it moves out, uh, to, to us. About it. Is it moving so to us? They're, they're still fighting over it, at least. We need to know, I mean, if they take another 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 exit, we should just, like, let them be. But if they take our exit, then we should take them here. But keep in mind, there might be other players which we cannot see like that, because they sure. can carry bounty, which might be onto us right now. I don't really feel good <laughs> at the very spot we are waiting right now. No, it's not a good spot. You know what? Hmm? Let's be cowards today. Okay. Let's return to fight another day. We still got some bounty, and at the moment it looks at least that the exit is kind of I mean, you survived two matches, which is quite good, actually. That's good. Yeah. With the money, we can get better equipment. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can hide at least behind the stagecoach a little bit there. Coming close? Yes. Okay, we're going to move inside the circle. Extraction, now co-op extraction on both ends. Let's see if there's anyone camping us, taking us down any second. It's always the trickiest moment. Looks fine. Cool. Made it out. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Survived twice. <laughs> All right. So what do, you, what do you think about this one here? Um, that was intense because like um, when, when we were making a run, a run for it, yeah. Suddenly, um, there was the the other guys, and I think yeah. you didn't see him even, right? I uh, no, because like I, at, at first I thought that it was just a grunt, but it was another player. No, uh, yeah, it's, when we went outside, you mean? Um, yeah, yeah, So, so, so uh, you said there were guys in the east, yes, and yes. when I looked, I only saw the grunt. For like, I think yes. I, I there might have been a guy before. I was just doing some pot shots I, in the there, direction. There were some some guys closing in from the north, and yeah. I and was sitting up up the stairs, but, yeah. I, but the, the position was disadvantageous because I was right behind the lantern, so I couldn't like really <laughs> wait for them on the on the stairs. And then we said, and then he said, okay, we grab the bounty now, and yeah, that was basically the moment. And then on the gate. Everyone was there. I don't know. They they were surprised as well, I guess, because otherwise they would have shot us. I think I think I think what helped us a little bit is like I think there were multiple teams closing and around us at the same time. So yes. like we saw the dudes on the east. That I think I brought one down. I'm not sure if uh, it looks like I hit him. Um, but then there was like this other team directly to our west side. Um, mm. So I think they also confused each other a little bit with that. So I think that's why we were lucky to slip through. Um, yeah. I think like if, if if you were on my spot with the Nitro Express, you could have taken them out easily. Yeah. But with the with the Colt and the and the shotgun, there was no way to engage them. Yeah, no, no, you need to wait for your range. There was one actually like right below me that was that was uh, was pretty uh, straightforward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. No, it was great. So basically, but the dynamite. I, I, yeah. I, the dynamite got got one right. I, I'm not sure because like I just I, threw it because I, I knew there were players around. I cannot say. I think I think one guy died at the gate. Whether this was your dynamite or whether you also threw dynamite, I think someone died in the explosion for sure. Someone. <laughs> dynamited <laughs> let's see so basically um uh we would be coming back like in a couple minutes then uh for the q a session yes cool with marcus with marcus yes cool nice see you guys see you
Okay. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, we're back on the couch and we have a new person. We have hey. Marcus. Hey guys. Uh, hey. Quickly introduce yourself and then we're just going to do some round discussion. Well, uh, basically, I'm a lead animator for Hunt. And uh, yeah, I mean, what can I, what can I tell you guys? Uh, uh, how how was the round? You were you were in the opposing team, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, especially you know this this time, I prefer to play the cowboy game, so I decided <laughs> to go Caldwell uppercut thing. I mean, yeah. usually I like to play safe, so I get Mosin again or something like you know like middle range kind of thing you mm -hmm. can use in every situation. But this time I with I actually felt in a cowboy, uh, I don't know mood. So mm -hmm. let's go. Uh, with the big guns this time, and I think we we got a lot of fun. I mean, we got a lot of PvP there, and seriously, I mean, I love this weapon. Seriously, it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's like you know, it's like having a I don't know, a hundred tons cannon in your right hand. Yeah, it's basically so. the uppercut, maybe for for you guys. Yeah, the name is so so you know, it fits it, so well. You you basically take a like a standard six shooter, and uh, yeah. you kind of elongate it, so you kind of replace the drum with a longer yeah, drum. Yeah. And out of a sudden, it can fire rifle bullets, and obviously that's going to be more of a hand cannon, than, <laughs> like a uh, very nice weapon. Yes. Uh, so, how did you experience the first round? Uh, the first round for us was more like uh, I don't know, like I would say, we we, we took the the sneaky way, mm -hmm. but at the same time we pumped PvP on the middle, so I think it was pretty balanced for us. It was really 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 nice. I mean. We end up with the bounty, so mm -hmm. yeah, happy. Oh, you got the second part. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> so there was a thing for us, like so. So I don't know who, who the team was. That's so our team. Our team, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds like cocky, but yeah, we did it. Because <laughs> like uh, so, when when we ambushed the guys who who, who took down the boss, basically, uh, we we only managed to snatch one bounty piece and. We kind of like decided to make a run for it. Um, yeah. At least get one out safely, rather than to pursue the other guy down into yeah. the tunnels again. Yeah. Um, so, so you basically took the other one that we left behind in a way. Like, yeah. Well, uh, what happened is like my <laughs> my, my my you know big, my basically my, my partner was shot down, and uh, I just retreated for a while and I just for having a look at the the whole situation and you know, <laughs> you know you have you have to use your brain, man. I mean, if you go in, in, into the fray, you're gonna get. Probably, you know, so you're gonna be a dead man. So later matters. you revived him and you both extracted him. Yes, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. Like, like a real comrade. He felt a little bit sad at the beginning, like, <laughs> oh, this guy's letting <laughs> me down, and yeah, but, but, no, but don't he, worry. He, he, here's the thing, like, so um, when you were in the basic, when we were facing off at that at that circus, mm -hmm. my weapon was empty after we killed the first guy. You, <laughs> you could have just taken me, man. You could have <laughs> just okay, taken me. Okay, well, I didn't know that. If, I used, you know, I prefer to go merciless, but whatever, next time. <laughs> so were you guys the ones that got shot down at the stairs? My partner was, yeah. Oh, okay. So he, he I left him, back into the, yeah, into, into sounds the really, mind. really bad, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, probably, I thought like we would be three guys waiting for me like this, you know. <laughs> so you did no. not get that extraction bonus. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you progressed, man. <laughs> yeah, there's something, there's something there. Let's I mean, go. it was the best decision, right? I mean, yeah. going up was, would have been more risky. Sure, I mean, and I was low on ammo, so yeah, not not the best did, idea. Did you manage to sneak out, or were there more guys? Like I sneak out, I sneak yeah. out. I just well, I, I decided to go the other way around. Yeah, let my partner like <laughs> dying there alone <laughs> while you know three guys were you know, looking at him like you know yeah. now. But um, I preferred you know to live <laughs> to leave him yeah, at least for a while, five minutes, and uh, I will came back after uh, five minutes after okay, you cool. know the whole battle ends and everyone still doing their thing. So yeah. Was for me like good, kind of you know, the safe way, <laughs> but it worked at the end. So and, and on the second round, uh, so when we were super lucky, we we found the uh, the boss right in the first clue location yep. directly, and obviously had a bit of a head start there. Mm -hmm. um, like were you one of the attackers or were you still like somewhere around the map there? No, no, no. Here's the thing: we found like a, some sort of a skirmish with uh, four guys. H here's the thing: I found like uh, four four guys fi fighting each other, mm -hmm. and basically I sneak back. And I killed one of them, mm. and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know what happened. Like we basically we, they 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 run away, and I was fighting with another one. I killed him, but uh, yeah, it was like for me it was like a, the the whole point of that game was on a huge scrimmage that happened, and I I, I kind of survived. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, this time we we didn't find any any kind of like a, you know. Uh, so it was lucky for us then, because yeah. otherwise, if you guys wouldn't have been tied up elsewhere, you probably would all be yeah. converging on our little uh, hotspot there. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like in a PvP mood today, so let's go for that. <laughs> <laughs> if I nice. see a shadow running away, 
you're down for sure yeah. if I have ammo, of course. I, I definitely heard there were a couple of guys around us, so we saw a few, but we actually managed to sneak out. So I wasn't sure if maybe one of the guys were there as well. I cannot say probably. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I was a survivor, so probably, yeah. I was okay. there, but so I don't know. Cool. Nice. Good matches. Okay, yep, let's go fun. to the questions because we have a lot of questions. First of all, the, the fake <coughs> brick wall is made fake. <laughs> <laughs> What do, what do you mean it's fake? But it's, it's, it looks really real. I didn't know it's, until it's today. very convincing. No, I didn't know until today, seriously. I'm just the yeah. Okay, so we got a lot of questions. Uh, first, it. I have some general questions. Uh, to start off, will there be a Field of View slider? So we plan uh, on having that in the end. Um, whether we will have that off for first test versions, uh, we don't know yet. Uh, but moving forward, obviously, we want to give as much control as possible. And so the end, you mean that. early access? Exactly. Or, yeah. Some, sometime during LX, early access, this should definitely happen. Whether this will happen right from the get-go at the moment is a bit okay. undecided. Um, can you turn off idle head bobbing? Um, idle head bobbing actually shouldn't be there at the moment. There's a bit of a bug in there. Yeah, that was um, during the editor. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, uh, at the moment, uh, there's some, some procedural systems we're running where it actually like it kind of like simulates a bit of the breathing. That shouldn't be there at the moment. It's the third person one which should not play in first person. So this is just a bug that will be resolved. Okay. Uh, can you play 100 controller? Um, not in the beginning. So I mean, we're focusing uh, going on PC uh, and as such, we want to make sure that the PC controls are rock solid first. Um, that doesn't mean that like, sometime during early access we will not uh, just increase it, like we might roll it out, but it's not a priority for us at the moment. Okay. Um, is friendly fire damage the same as hitting other players or players hitting you? It's, it's a little bit less. Uh, so when we obviously we want to make sure that people have kind of a fair uh, surrounding, so just because your partner throws a firebomb doesn't mean you should be just able to just walk through it without taking any damage, right? You can exploit it quite a lot. But we also don't want you to die instantly from one accidental or maybe intentional headshot. Um, <laughs> so in this case, yeah, right. uh, what we do is we kind of scale the damage a little bit. So it d still causes damage, but uh, we kind of try to be a bit more forgiving. So I haven't fully yet ironed out exactly how that mechanic will work out uh, in the end in the game. But we want to make sure that there is certain lethality in the game. And it also means uh, your partner and yourself, uh, you can kind of like damage each other. Okay. Um, are the bullets hit scan or do they have bullet drop? And if they have bullet drop, do different weapons have different drop rates? So basically, we have hit scan. That's uh, uh, it's it's a very traditional system. Um, what we do have, however, is bullet speed and obviously damage drop, which means that as far further projectile travels, like the more it kind of drops down in damage, but it doesn't physically drop. So it's a very traditional hit scan system. Obviously, grenades and, and other more ballistic weapons will be uh, following that ballistic trajectory, so it's an actual physicalized model. But for normal bullets, um, like in our game, the distances are usually between like 20 and a maximum like 100, 150 meters usually, just because it's a very swampy environment, right? Mm -hmm. So there isn't really a need to have like like huge ballistic arcs and then like kind of like aiming. And also we are using single shot weapons and, and repeating rifles. We have limited use for machine guns, mm -hmm. but usually like you can more easily steer or aim than seeing like the traces fall down. We don't have that. Our system is a bit more traditional, but actually it works very well. Okay. Um, are skins for your weapons included in mods? If not, what are you take on skins for weapons, colors, tokens, handles, etc.? Um, yeah, so basically we have the options to provide skins. For now, we want that um, each variation that we offer has a gameplay benefit. So for now, we're not focusing on just getting, um, I don't know, just a different colored buttstock or, 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 or handguard out, of, out, of, out, out there, despite the fact that it would look really cool of course um, but for now it's basically just adding variety to and that has gameplay purpose so later whatever may might happen there the, the, the systems in place would offer um, such a thing that we that we at least like provide um, 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 such variations um, but I think with um, uh, some something that is community driven like mod driven for example I think for this, the pipeline is a bit too uh, complicated and that might also break the immersion. So, because of course, community tends to be do crazy creative stuff, which is cool, but on the other hand, that could break the immersion that we want the players to feel. Yep. Yep. So like pink guns, that, that doesn't yeah. have a place in our game. Uh, shooting a zombie in the leg slows it. Is that my phone? Yeah, it is. <laughs> One sec. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let me see. Shooting, shooting a zombie that like slows it, does the mechanic work against players too? 
No, it doesn't. Uh, so we, we intentionally decided to uh, keep the players a little bit more, gen uh, like, uh, not really generic, but a bit more predictable when it comes to that. So obviously you do more or less damage depending where you hit them. So a leg shot or an arm shot does, does less damage than like hitting the upper or lower torso or the head. Uh, head being fatal most of the time. Um, however, um, like slow down mechanics, etc., we intentionally didn't do because it, we, so we tried it, we experimented with it, but it's very frustrating for players if they're caught in the middle of a, of a, yeah. of a street, basically, and then they get a leg shot. It's cool against the zombies, especially since it's very visual, where like you said, mm. all dismemberment effects and cool stuff there. But for players, we try to keep that a little bit more um, in the in the realm of where we we can kind of manage the frustration. I can imagine it's a cool feature, but the thing is, it's not fun. Yes. It's not fun. It's killing the. The fun here, so yeah, I can understand that. Um, yeah. Okay. Are there snipers in the game? Well, I guess there are. There will be definitely. So, yep. um, with the weapons that we have in the first drop and the uh, for the early access, there will be no sniper scopes. Um, but um, we have plans for adding them later on. Yes. Um, so that will be a, a package that adds sniper scopes to the game. And that will be the point where we will definitely see some sniping going on in the in the mission. But also, um, we have, um, for example, in the night mission, we have like limited. Uh, there's some fog going on. Also, um, with the scopes of that time, you usually don't have a red dot sight or uh, or something like that that is like basically lit. So it also like on the night mission, it will be tougher for sniping. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, you're you're, you're better hidden. So. Um, also, if you go on the ground, for example, or indoors, or like... So I think we have a nice yeah. balance on the map where we have open spots where snipers can shine. But, for example, if then the um, the boss is, for example, underground, what do you do? I mean, you can camp the, the place. So there will be some snipers happening. But also, this um, uh, sniper scope, for example, um, is a quite pricey um, a, a piece of equipment that you have to earn. And, of course, you're, risk you're always risking of losing it. So I think there will be a nice balance between people that are yep. going close and... Okay. Long range fighting. Um, will there be a rank mode in the game? Um, so basically, we we have the rank mode as our default, which is um, we have leaderboards and people can compete with their with their ranks and stuff. Um, there will be more details about that a bit more in the future, um, and uh, that would basically be the main way of playing the game. So wherever you do, there are always going to be consequences. You'll be measured up against what you did there, and uh, you can see how well you've been doing compared to your friends, to other people, and. Uh, so the ranking is a very important part because obviously it gives you purpose to play. Okay. Um, do weapons have a chance to jam? They did. Um, so we, we experimented, right? We, we experimented with that. Uh, um, we took that out for the time being because um, the problem with malfunctioning weapons is that it can be very frustrating. Like it might happen at like that really, really bad shot. moment, that one shot you needed. And uh, obviously, when that happens, you're really going to blame the game because you would have had the perfect skill, obviously, to pull that shot off, but the game stopped you from <laughs> doing it. Um, no, so we, we, we have some ideas how we want to bring them back eventually. So it's something which we just we need to iterate on, we need to experiment with, mm -hmm. but it has to be in a way where it's not frustrating. So, for example, what we're thinking about is, and again, we're still looking into this, is that a jam or malfunctioning might happen more after the shot, so like during cycling the bolt and stuff like that, so that actually the shot itself still is there, but you might need to pay a little bit afterwards, like fumbling with a weapon, clearing a malfunction or whatever, before you can fire again. Okay, so. that makes sense. Um, any cools that were or cool guns that were developed and ultimately scrapped? Um, yeah, usually like we had some mines that we experimented with yeah. and um, we decided to scrap them for now because um, they proved like in, in the current setup they proved not so fun. So we really want them, but there's a, the, the thing of it, it needs to it needs to work in, in the gameplay um, the situation basically if you place them, um, <coughs> they need to be visible because we want the players to interact with them. so there need to be a chance to um, disarm them. But it, it's a fine line because, like, they need to be you need to see, you need be to be able to see them. But then uh, again, they don't have to give away their position so easily because then they 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 don't fulfill their purpose. Mm -hmm. And finding that fine line, for example, um, we are about to experiment with that. And um, so, because it didn't prove so much fun, we dropped it for now. And also, what we are also trying to do and emphasize is having more equipment that is less lethal, but basically yes. um, trolls the other players and basically yeah um, maybe distracts them 
or um, provides challenges, changes the environment, for example, instead of having just one item that maybe when it goes off kills two other players because that is fun for the party who, pl who places it there, but that's usually not fun um, for the ones who just got caught by it and didn't have a chance to react. So um, what else do we uh, screw up? Um, we looked a little bit into into bow and arrow and crossbow stuff. So we have some cobons uh, lined up now, but for the time being, for example, we took them a little bit out, talked them a little bit because we wanted to have like the whole arrow shooting mechanic mm. to feel much better. So you can like kind of retrieve the arrows also, you pick them up again from the world. Um, and we kind of decided like to park them until we have that really ready. So that just like, like another silenced rifle basically. Yeah. They play unique. Yeah, but we're getting a crossbow because we yeah. still have the yep. crossbow yep. on the website. Yep, and that crossbow will even have the ammunition, so there's one with explosive bolts. Ooh, so nice. So you'll, you'll make sure if, uh, 1899 grenade launcher right there. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds really think. nice, yeah. Um, can you find powerful weapons in the map like machine guns, for example? Um, mm, that ties a bit into the question before, right? Yeah. yeah. We experimented with it and uh, decided to, uh, for now, not do it because once uh, it do, it feel kind of forced because you're progressing through a swamp environment, basically run down settlements, run down barns, farm areas. So there's actually no real reason why there would be a machine gun because that would be a super cutting edge uh, piece of technology, time, which wouldn't yeah, be there in the first yeah. place unless yeah. the army would roll in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe they did and they just all it's turned a into zombies. It's maybe. just a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that yeah, changes uh, everything. Yeah, there, there, <laughs> there were actually some, some ideas. And again, this is something we just experimented a little bit yes. to have maybe a couple of mounted guns we could kind of place mm -hmm. in the level. I know that CJ is always asking for a machine gun to place in the in the, in the level, so at one point probably we give we give him one. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe trebuchet then that could fit, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing we have in mind, for example, is like I mean, so we are uh, at the end of the 19th century, and so the American Civil War is like 40 years ago, mm -hmm. and they did have some very primitive Gatling guns back then. So maybe one of those might find its way somewhere in the swamps. Like That's the hand hand crank ones. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So again, we can't promise this at the moment, but it's definitely something we're super interested in trying out, and, and we see what we can get. And the harpoon gun should make a and, and make a harpoon gun for CJ too, because he's very demanding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, are there going to be different difficulty levels for AI for different play styles? One for you. Mm. I mean, I can, I can answer, I can also answer all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically um, diff difficulty levels, levels. So yes, as you as you select your missions, basically what you can do is you can pick a difficulty setting for that mission. So that means um, mostly composition of AI. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will not make AI out of sudden survive two headshots where you kill them in one before because we're not a game with health bars, right? Like where you see like a bar on top of the enemy. So it's, we're not like a stat-based game. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that AI or enemies in general are very consistent across all difficulties. It's going to be more along the means of like how many specials were this regular are there? What's the density? How often do you encounter a hellhound pack as we did uh, on the roads there? Stuff like that, basically. And um, obviously, the higher difficulty uh, the mission has, um, the more the reward usually is in that mission. So... It comes down to risk reward again, like uh, you have a higher chance to die, but if you make it out, even more bounty for you. So greed is on our side. Um, are the wagons completely destructible or burnable? Uh, the wagons, uh, you mean the, the little carts we had for yeah. the ammunition? Uh, at the moment, not. Um, there's an idea floating around, we have to see if we get to it, which is in general being able to destroy ammo boxes. And obviously if such an ammo box is in a cart, that might have some effect on it. Sounds um, scary. Ammo <laughs> dash, basically. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> again, we have to see. I mean, what we, what we want to do is, uh, our goal is to make a rich sandbox environment. So you've seen it, mm -hmm. like, you can interact with all sorts of different things there. There's like animals uh, caged up, which can alert AI. Um, kind of like building that mental image, what happens in the mission around you, that's super, super important. And uh, obviously being able to interact reliably with the world. Like if you see some people like just stocking up on weapons on a supply point and you might have that weapon that can reach out and actually destroy that box, mm. or you might kill two players with one shot. I mean, that, that's cool. That's nice. So we will see. So we'll see how far we get there. Scary. Also, also we, we had some prototypes going on really early in the development, for example, for fire progression. And uh, at the moment, we have fire progression in the oil puddles, for example. Yes. So setting uh, certain parts on fire will basically propagate and then maybe blow up a barrel or something. Yes. 
Um, but in general, the fire propagation, which would be pretty cool with all the haystacks that we have, also proves to be like quite challenging yes. from a from a level design perspective because, like back then, fire was the worst enemy of any settlement. Still, so, made by, by wood, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it needs to be like readable by the player what can be set on fire, what not, and what are the consequences for the gameplay. And that is like a large um, element. Yeah. So it's basically where do you start and where do you end? So yes. a stagecoach or like a like a box wagon mm -hmm. uh, horse cart is is made out of wood. Haystacks are very burnable, flammable, flammable usually. Yeah. Uh, most of the barns are made from wood. So so if you make one destroyable or burnable, where do you draw the line? You want to make it consistent. So yeah, I know exactly. That's where, where we kind of focus a little bit more on these like interactive objects. The player can uh, can work with like these barrels, oil spills, stuff that designers place to create cool challenges, mm -hmm. and re make sure that the players understand them in the language of the level and can use them. Okay. Um, can you disarm players like you disarm grunt? I don't think so, right? No, you and can't. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> what it works for the enemies doesn't work for the player. And it's about to keep the fun going on, right? I mean, yep. yeah, yep. It's, it's the same reason we were, you know, the same issue we were talking about previously about the slowing down the player. And uh, yes. it's pretty much the same. I mean, it looks like cool from outside, but to be honest, if you play that, you're going to feel like a little bit of pain and yeah, frustration and so on. So you need to avoid this. Yeah. yeah. Um, could there be a benefit to finding all the clues first before finding the creature? Like, do you gain some kind of temporarily perks to help fight it or XP? XP mainly. Um, so we have this concept of bounty, right? So this is what you take away from the boss in the end. What if you so you go into this mission and you you basically got a contract, kill the spider. And if you fulfill that contract and you bring out proof, like the, mm -hmm. the bounty tokens, you get paid. Um, the more you bring back, the more you get paid. Um, now the bounty, um, however, also happens when you um, you get that basically after the mission when you figure out a clue. Because you're still kind of honoring the contract, like you're finding clues that lead you toward the target. So every every time you find a clue in the world, it kind of gives you bounty after the mission. You don't need to carry this out. This is part of the rewards post mission. Hidden but rewards. it makes sure that if you follow the mission flow, so if you follow these objectives, you have a high chance of still getting out with some money. Even if you die after the second clue, you will you still you still try it. You still honor the contract, so you get something out of it. Okay, cool. Um, when you are bleeding, does your stamina burn faster? No, um, stamina is unaffected by this. Um, so bleeding is just affecting the health bar. Um, so bleeding, only some weapons can cause bleeding. So for example, if you run into razor wire, obviously you start bleeding. Certain certain enemies might have very sharp weapons. Like we saw some of the grunts carrying some of the mm -hmm. makeshift blades. Um, obviously, if they hit you, they can also cause bleeding damage. Um, even shotguns, uh, shotguns can do that, like in terms of this multi-wound mm -hmm. hit. So we have a couple of weapons in the game that can cause bleeding damage. It's like a secondary damage effect. And if they do, basically you need to find shelter a little bit, like hold the button down for like a second and stop the bleeding. And just it makes you rethink the situation. Like you might be like yeah. pulling back from combat because you continue to lose the, lose the health. It kind of puts pressure on you. But we also make sure that this doesn't happen all the time because it would also be getting very annoying fast. Yeah, makes sense. Um, what is the team doing to make the night actually feel dark so that you can't just jack up your brightness and ga gamma for advantage? Uh, so we have a couple of tricks up our sleeve there. Um, most of it is really just making sure that uh, we put some light sources in the map in general. So overall, mm -hmm. like you will never ever have a totally pitch black area. It's just unavoidable. It's very, very hard to, to pull that one off. But um, we have a couple of nice ways of making sure that the players cannot see indefinitely with that and encouraging them to actually use light sources, for example, when they blow up stuff, right? Yeah. Um, uh, that's that we, we still punctually kind of draw attention to the players whenever they kind of have to reveal themselves because they're, they fire. We saw it a couple of times, I think, in a video where there was a firefight in the distance and you saw like the bright muzzle flashes kind of yeah. like illuminating against the fog. Um, so we use more mechanics like to kind of like provoke the player to somehow like be this little beacon of light. And then you can home into that and um, obviously there are situations where you might play a night mission and don't bring a flashlight. That is perfectly fine. Or maybe just one of the two players in the team bring a flashlight mm -hmm. because you want to bring some other cool tools instead. Yeah. Um, so this is something we support. Right? You can just pick up a lantern you find in the world and use that temporarily. Um, so we introduce these light sources and again, as part of the sandbox, give you a bit more control. Okay. Uh, we have one question that I just saw in the chat. Uh, can we have some further information about the meta progression, the bounty, the, mon uh, the money, uh, what they're used to buy weapons and perks. Uh, we'll probably do a completely unique stream about that one in the future. <laughs> that is true. I, I have that feeling that might come up as one of our topics. <laughs> I just wanted to ask because it was an original question. Now we talk more about that uh, very soon. Okay. Uh, will there be any concept of armor? 
in terms of body armor for yeah. the players. Um, not really. So, so instead, what we do is we give players control about their health. So you might have noticed that we have like not a continuous health bar, but we have these health chunks. Um, so what players do is when they recruit a hunter, they come with a predefined amount of health. Right? If you recruit like a cheap hunter, he might have little health. If you recruit like an endgame hunter with like lots of cool equipment, he might also have like 150 hit points total. Right? So it's quite a lot. Um, now, health is something in that game you can lose. So if you get burned by fire, there's a chance that you actually lose a health chunk permanently. And then as part of the meta progression for that hunter, if you survive the mission, you can use some of the points to kind of restore health or upgrade your health and kind of manage that. So in a way, you can you can make it more armored by just giving them more health in total. But mm. there is no concept at the moment where we say we, you can equip body armor of some sort. Yeah, not for the player, but we have something going on for, for an enemy, right? Yes, I mean, well, we have one enemy is the armored and yes. he's a beast. Where's so. all the armor? Yeah, this is really nice. I mean, you can actually aim for the plates blow out the plates and you you get the weak points, I suppose, and you can go and fight there. So yeah, somehow we have some something going on there. Yeah. And I think the health chunk system is quite creative in terms of how you play because like we you could see in the in the in the play or in, in the game we just played, with like only two health chunks that are like bigger, you can like soak up a bit more damage before you lose them. Yeah. Um while um with more chunks you if you if you you, you don't risk of losing this large piece um, yes. if you if you hit the the threshold kind of. Yeah. Well, it comes down to the pricing. Like so, as you upgrade, obviously, mm -hmm. like a smaller chunk, they, it's easier to upgrade to that. A bigger chunk just might cost you a little bit more in terms mm -hmm. of upgrade points in order to to get there. It's also that um, uh, just important point about that. We you might have noticed it in the stream already when you when you start playing, is that within each of the chunks, the health kind of regenerates after a while. So as long as you don't fully lose a chunk yet, um, yeah, the yeah, health will go back up fully and fill up the chunk. So if you just take a couple of shots, like like you just said, Alex, uh, you basically can just fall back into cover a little bit, wait for it to regenerate, and you you're, you're fine. If you took a more damage than the chunk could could take, obviously, so it bleed over into the other yeah, chunk. It well, it only regenerates up to the to the next one. So then you need to find like health uh, stations, or you bring some bandages in order to top them back up. Okay. Uh, can you loot people's bodies? Nope, intentionally not. Um, so this is this has been a, a point of a lot of discussion, obviously, in our process as we as we uh, designed the game. Um, the reason why we said we don't is because we want to focus players on the mission. Yeah. Um, like we are not the type of game where where the purpose is to just sit like for three hours, uh, uh, basically under a tree waiting for someone to run by and then snipe them. This is this is not hunt. Hunt is a match based game. It's very important for us that we. We kind of get the, peer, the the players set on that mission to get the bounty because this is how you progress in the game, and for that purpose we kind of like de incentivize a little bit uh, killing players. Obviously, you, you you still kill them because you you remove competition. Yeah, it's a, it's like a player is an obstacle in your way to get the bounty out, so that's why you do it. But you don't do it to hunt the players only. Yeah. So, so it doesn't so become the, the main. Risk that you can take on the map. Yes, engaging in the player. Yes, uh, engaging the player. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't become the main interest for your hunt. Yes, it does Gather thing. other people's weapons because that could actually be a reward yes. from gaining like kills and bounties and levels. You see, like kill, killing players is tying into the ex, uh, ex experience. Exactly. So exactly. that, that yeah. is kind of the reward there. that yeah. you that you that you still yeah. get for being an active and successful hunter. And I think to keep yeah, keep that balance is really is is the key for for. Because it's you know the game is it's about that it's about the mission you know yeah. you can only loot the bounty so yeah. and that's the most important thing yeah uh, will there be talisman or power items in the game um, we have some ideas not initially but uh, there are some ideas about like enchantments and stuff like that we're experimenting with in a similar way we also want to bring different ammo types into the game moving forward. And More last toys. question for today. Okay. <laughs> uh, are the maps uh, procedurally generated or there, are they static maps? How many map tile sets are there? Um, so our map is completely handmade and that's good because uh, basically we're playing to our strengths for that. Like so with our previous games like Crisis, etc., we have kind of like become very good at making handmade labs, uh, maps and being able to just like uh, show in detail, like detail per square meter, like what we can do there. Uh, we tried out procedural stuff along the way, and uh, the results were always below our expectations. Like, there's just nothing that replaces like a good designer being able to like have some good quality time with the map and just over the course of months like to bring us like into a really good state. And it's also important because kind of people can own that space, make it a bit more personal, and can tell their own little stories about what happened there, tie it all together. So for us, it's been much more important to have this one big map, this one square kilometer map, which you've seen there. 
and uh, tell all these little stories inside of that map so people can kind of learn and master that map also rather than, than having like a repetitive, repetitive system of the same tiles over and over again. Or a procedural system or that procedural might system. doesn't work perfectly in all circumstances. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the end, the human brain is good at pattern recognition. In the end, all of these little tiles, they'll all be dissected. People see them. You can try as hard as you want. It's very hard, really, to, to, to fake that. So we, we went down our strengths, uh, which is handcrafted stuff. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks. Playing the game. Killing people, <laughs> telling us about guns, <laughs> the gun experience, and looking in the editor. Uh, we're going to go for today. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about the world of Hunt. So we have another theme. Uh, and obviously, you get to ask more questions. And we'll have the VOD later of this fast broadcast up where you guys can rewatch everything if you have anything uh, missed. And yeah, we'll be back next week. So thank you again. And, uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. -bye. Ciao. <laughs>